Welcome back to another episode of Stoppage Time TV. We're live in the flesh, live and direct, direct and effect. You already know what time it is. And this week we have a very, very, very special episode. We've had some guests on before, but for me, this is like a, this is a big guest from you. know, this man's a legend of my club, mm. <laughs> but also someone that is like my big bro mm. sitting in, in with us, you know, with the man them. It's, it's a special one, man. This is someone that's, you know, probably seen broadcasting now. Comes from probably one of the most infamous family trees up there in the UK, footballing wise as well. Someone that ultimately set a precedent of being a Premier League winger and doing stuff. Former England international, someone that's won big things as well. It's the one and only SWP. What's good, my bro? You good? Good, yeah. Hey. So man, finally yeah, overdue, yeah, man. Some noise. Oh, yeah, yeah, some noise. Yeah, yeah, We've got a Premier League camp in the field, bro. Hey, 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 hey. Only like, only like Come two, on. You're only like <laughs> two seasons late. We've been talking about this for a <laughs> while, but it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. good Just to find As well, made history on the weekend as well. Yes. <laughs> First ever father, <laughs> son, father and son mm. match of the family day. Family tree, you know. Talk about family trees, that's heritage right there. You need to family. Trust me. Father and son, but how have you been, bro? You I'm good, man. Yeah. You're looking good, man. Life treating you well. You know, I'm not complaining. You know. It's hard work, but nothing easy comes without that. Isn't so it? That's what I was saying beforehand, man. Certain man didn't want to go into events, but you get me. You've got <laughs> yeah. to, when pros are telling them you've got to work content on. ain't easy, man. <laughs> I'm telling you. You've got to be up and down everywhere. You, you know how it is now. <laughs> so, man, we're going to have a candid conversation, mm -hmm. but I just have to, I have to get straight to it, man. Now, I need to say something first. Go on. I need to say something first, yeah. People may not know, why me and him are cousins, you know? Me, me and Sean are cousins. Let me, let me tell oh, you why oh. we're cousins. Well, let me tell you why we're cousins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the wild claims already coming. Here we go. Let me tell you why we're cousins, right? So imagine, it's crazy because obviously you played for Chelsea in 06, 07, right? And obviously my brother, yeah, um, is a Chelsea fan. Same height, same position, winger, look a little bit alike as well, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> His nickname in uni, yeah, was S-Dub. Yeah. Everyone calls him S-Dub. Yeah. Still to this day, he's called S-Dub, bro, because of you. <laughs> so, 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 so bro, why, 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 why? You've been a part of my family, bro. <laughs> <laughs> my whole life. Nah, this is crazy. S-Dub, <laughs> that's hey, big, come, bro. Hold, hold your hamstring, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hold your hamstring. <laughs> but no, nah, man, I mean, like I said, this has been overdue, but no, nah, thanks for coming, man. I remember, uh, I think it was a, a season and a half ago, we were in Stoke. Yeah. Obviously we were doing the documentary, we just tried, and seeing you do all of the broadcasting, doing all this stuff since then is sick. But let's get straight to it, man. The way you're disrespecting your pops with this, you know, with this seat Arsenal <laughs> thing <laughs> is insane. But how does it feel from like that perspective, having that one up on them and being like, you know what, we City have delivered where they have delivered. Cause you called it from a long time ago. A lot of pundits were saying, it's not gonna happen. But you were like, this is City, you, you stood in it. And you stood against it, against your father on national TV. No, <laughs> You're saying it like I just come from it. I didn't just come from it. Right, so basically, you remember when Arsenal won, when Arteta took over and they won the cup? Mm -hmm. I was quite the whole time City were winning things, never said anything. As soon as Arsenal won that, my phone, I got bleep on my phone. I was like, bro, he's texting me. This don't normally happen. <laughs> Looked at the phone. His dad. Just bare laugh out loud faces, right? So from that day, I said, okay my time will come. Yeah. So I just waited and waited. And that day just felt like the right day to do it. <laughs> so <laughs> Something begun that yeah, day. Yeah, so I just <laughs> put it out there. <laughs> but what, what have you, as like a former player, like what have you made of, I don't want to just focus on this season because this season is the moment, but just the progress of that project to where it is now, like the dynasty that's been built over the time. I was there right, right at the beginning. And like the shake from the time you come in, it's almost like he had the plan in place before he even bought the club. Mm. Cause as soon as he come in, it just hit the ground running. Like, and the signings that they were making, people always say they're throwing money at this, throwing money at that. But if you look at the signings they're making, they've always been in and around 50, 60 mil max. Reasonable Apart price, from yeah. Jack. Mm. He's the only one that's kind of been outside the box. But the thing I like most, a lot of them, unless you're really a football, football, football fan, mm -hmm. Most play, most people wouldn't even have heard of the players they bought. No one was talking about Vincent Company before he signed for Man City. Mm. Nobody talked about David Silva. There weren't really that much hype around Nigel mm -hmm. Dijon. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So unless you was really into football, mm -hmm. then you would understand these players. But City brought him here and just made them, for me, global stars. They made them well-known. So that comes from 
coaches, the club, like they made them better mm -hmm. at what they already yeah. was good at. And that's what the dynasty's about. And if you see the whole club, everything around the clubs got better, redeveloped. They yeah. give people jobs. So it wasn't just about the football team. It was just about Man City, but the whole of Manchester. And they just keep doing it. Now it's just worldwide. So it's like, and it's so say? mad because you've actually seen that almost cycle the full way round, and you've almost become so like synonymous with City as well. But even if we go like before that, even mm -hmm. before the whole City chapter side, you're actually not even a City youth graduate, are you? A lot yeah, of I am. Yeah, he's a, he's a no, you, but did you not come yeah. through the Nottingham Forest Academy? Yeah, no, initially. so. I never actually touched the Nottingham mm. Forest Academy. Ah. So what happened is like playing some mad tournament in North London. Joel Cole was playing in it. He was at West Ham at the time. Right. And there was a Forest scout there. Right. So he said, we'd love to take you on trial up at Forest. Okay. And it was Marlon Harewood's agent. He's not, I remember his name. We got Marlon, Marlon. we yeah. got him on the front of the show. Yeah. Guy, man. Yeah. <laughs> his name is Kieran Rafferty. So right. he brought me, my mama, my Sunday league manager to this trial. Mm -hmm. When Then they wanted to sign me when I was like, 14, I'd say, 13, 14. And then just as YTS was coming about, you know, when you meant to yeah, yeah, yeah. So about a month, two before that, when on work experience, mm -hmm. man like me don't like school in it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that was my work Lovely. experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. Go there, clean boots, learn the ropes, get mm -hmm. myself prepared for what I'm All gonna right. walk into. Yeah. Then when I've gone up there, they said, yeah, we wanna sign you. I was on the train back down with Marlon and my mum. Then they got the call. Uh, we, he's too small, not good enough. So I was like, huh? That wasn't what you <laughs> said yeah. just a minute ago. Okay. So I got like, I had to learn like the mental harshness of football from, uh, from like almost... 16. Mm. Wow. So I just knew what it was, innit? And that's at 16. So then, cause I'm thinking growing up kind of almost Ian Wright's son, do you, do you feel like that maybe hindered you or played an advantage to you in some aspects? No, I just, we've always, especially me Because that, that, that first rejection must feel like a little bit like, if you did feel like it did help you, that's kind of the first. I think like, so, so in, in like the football world, people will talk about it, but mm. if you grow up in certain pockets like South London, North London, mm. East London, yeah, West yeah. London, Man on the street don't business about who your dad is. Yeah. Yeah. Like if, you, if you're playing football, they respect him, but mm -hmm. I'm not him. Yeah. And that's how I grew up with my life. Like yeah. I'm not my dad. That is my dad. He's mm -hmm. done his thing. If I want to be in that position, I have to do my thing. Yeah. So we was always brought up to make our own paths in life. Wherever it may take us, this is the path mm -hmm. we decided on. Yeah. Bradley decided on being a striker. <laughs> it turned out that I decided on being a winger. Yeah. So that is just, and that's the same thing I teach my kids as well. I, I don't teach them football because mm. I don't want you to play football like me. I want you to play football like you. Mm. And that's- Be the, your own. Yeah, be your own person. Yeah. So when I was going into football and everybody else was talking about it, I was like, yeah, so. Was, was, that, was that hard blocking out that noise though? Because it, as a youngster, it must kind of, getting your ears at times a little bit? No, I find, to be honest, I find it quite easy. I can see now that I'm older with say like my my youngest son, how it can be a hindrance or a benefit. Cause you have those coaches out there that'll be like, we want him at the club, but I don't want to play him just because he's so-and-so's mm -hmm. son. So there, there is that, I've seen it now with my own eyes. I've spoken to a few players, they've had the same problems because that the problem that they are caused is because we're trying to let them do it themselves instead of giving them a carrot. Yeah. Like I don't think anybody should be sent on trial if they don't deserve it mm -hmm. because football's hard enough as it is. There's other kids there that's done this for three years, fighting away and then it's not right for me to just bring my son and then they're just gonna play him in front of him. He has to put in the same work as that kid. And they have to understand to get to be at the top of football. If you look at people like Messi and Ronaldo, mm -hmm. that didn't come easy. Mm -hmm. The thing is, the, you know, people are haters as well. Let's keep it under. I remember one time Paul Merson came down somewhere with his son. Everybody was just waiting for Paul Merson's son to have a dead touch. As soon as his son didn't do what people wanted to, it was spoken about for like a week. Like yeah. Paul Merson's son's dead at football, God, man. He's, he's, dead. Right he, off. he's dead. You know what I mean? He's dead. It was, it, so being Ian Wright's son, mm. I just can't imagine that. There would have been a lot of not only admiration for you, because obviously people probably want to know what's your dad like, blah, blah, blah. But on the other side, people would be hating, man. Wait, you know what I mean? Waiting for him to be What's not good. Yeah. You know what's mad about it as well? Because you mentioned obviously growing up, you do what you do. Like, especially like Southwise, like 
that that's a it's a pocket of space where there's loads of ballers anyway, and you have to earn your straps as well. Yeah. But you mentioned the small thing, like away from sort of like obviously the family name. Is that something throughout your whole career, whether it was sort of managers' perceptions on you that you thought you had to battle with, or did you just just do your thing? I just done my thing. Mm. Like to me, playing football, especially when I went to City, more so. I just felt like I was just in South London playing with my friends on the park. Yeah. Just that main road, just, just had some goals. That was the difference. We didn't <laughs> yeah, use yeah. bikes or jumpers as posts. But uh, was that main road? Yeah, back in the main road. Main <laughs> road. Yeah. That, that, remember where you came from? <laughs> <laughs> remember <laughs> where you came from? Main road, you know. Oh, yeah. Come yeah. on, yeah. man. You will, because yeah, if you've, like for for anyone that doesn't know, that's what you call trenches. That's that wasn't. Oh, wait. That's what's old where was that? Is that middle? That Moss side. Moss side. It's like Moss <laughs> right in the middle, man. Right, and then there was like Platt Lane where we used to train. Mm. We all used to have to share the same pictures, the same physio. And then so City had them big, the baggy, baggy kind of shiny light blue kit. <laughs> yeah. like, I remember that, man. <laughs> you was breaking through at a time as well when they was almost like recovering from that. 96 relegation, if I'm not Yeah, sure. so. They had the back-to-back -back relegation. That's kind of when like, I signed. That was when was you signed. When they, just, when they just got relegated. Rock Division bottom then. Two. So then you're <laughs> therefore part of the rise pretty much <laughs> yeah. in the Premier League. You saw that. And what was, what was that kind of like? Because nowadays we see it with Brentford. We've seen it with Wigan, mm -hmm. Swansea. And we're like, wow, these teams that do these back-to-back -back promotions, it's almost like a one-of-one, -one, but... See, you did see it. we're actually the first in the Premier yeah. League to almost do that. Yeah. I was watching from the sideline back then, but the, the thing that I took from it, and in a way, is the thing that made me start supporting City properly was even in Division Two, mm -hmm. they sold out every ticket they had. Mad, and mm -hmm. they Big Steve. They, they, there, <laughs> Big Steve. <laughs> there, was there. On Steve was the burn there. The burnabout. <laughs> exactly. That's what I mean. So just little <laughs> things like that, and just the way the club was run, it is. My mum to this day says, where are you? Are you at your second home? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's how it was always looked. Manchester was like my second home. I mm -hmm. left home at 16. And like that, I think that was the hardest part mm -hmm. for me of my football career. Because obviously black, we have certain tastes and flavors in mm -hmm. food. Mm -hmm. When I moved up there, <laughs> I had to live with say like a family I didn't know were white, didn't really care about how they cooked as long <laughs> as our kids were fed. Fed, yeah. yeah. Then it was like me, Dixon Etu, he played hey, as well. Yeah, 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 my boy, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so two boys from South London, one from Peckham, one from Broccoli, moving to Manchester, living with a family we don't know. One's African, one's Caribbean. Mm. And, we're, and not, we're not having like the food that we're used to having. Yeah. So we had to find a way to get around that. Plus be ready mentally to train for football mm. on top of like missing our family, not seeing our friends. Yeah. So there was loads of little things we had to get used to. And then the next hardest one was me and him had a thing that we would just, after the game, just drive back straight down to London. Cause I kick Bruh, off- That's a I kick off, drive, you know? Bro. It's not easy. I kick yeah. off used to be like, YTS at school boys, I kick off was early and it? it was like mm. 10, 11 o'clock. Okay. Yeah. So, you got so the by the time off. we get down, it's like sixes. Mm. You get to see family, you mm -hmm. get to go club, hang out yeah, with somebody. Like on a, on a Sunday, the, I, w I was the one that wanted to leave. And like I say, come on, let's just leave at 10 PM. Mm -hmm. Well, beat the traffic. And then go up, Dixon's like, nah, just, just pick me up at 4 a.m. in the morning. I'm yeah. like, Dixon, you're not even flipping driving. You're just sitting there. <laughs> and then by the time before we, I swear, before we used to get to the motorway, this he brother was snoring. Yeah. <laughs> they're, okay, no, like a life. <laughs> they're the worst. They're the worst. Yeah, they don't even want to do DJ yeah. numb. Nah, the worst passengers. So, that was, you're gone. so I had to stop after them because I was like, this is, I can't keep doing this drive <laughs> mentally on my own. So then after that, it was mad. So the moment, like, obviously we're talking about you at, at City, but the moment, what was the moment when the actual call came in terms of, hey, we want you to play for Manchester City and we want you to be a part of this? Like, how did you feel in in that moment? <laughs> you know what, I didn't, I, he knows what I'm like. I'm quite um, laid back, chilled. Too laid back. Whatever it is, it is sort of. Manchester City, yeah. Right. Yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> like, 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 you know, <laughs> um, and the way it first happened was, there was a testimonial game at Old Trafford. Mm. And the manager said, right, we just want to bring you along for experience. Because the game was on TV. I'd never played with the first team before. I've mm. only trained with them a few times. And then I got in the change room. So we've decided you're, you're going to be on the bench. 
and you're more than likely going to come on. So I was like, all right, cool. No problem. And then my phone kept vibrating, but I couldn't, I couldn't answer it. But then when I did get on, I, d I just remember doing some like mazy run, just as if like I was on natural in South London yeah. um, <laughs> and was playing FA knockouts. I just went on a mad run, went all the way through, got to Fabian Bartes. I must've been at six yard box. I could have just put it there, <laughs> there. <laughs> I tried to be too cheeky. Uh, I tried to chip him. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I got in the change room after, I remember Joe Roy and Willie Donicky saying to me, Sean, why didn't you just put in a corner? Mm. It's like, I don't know. I just thought he was going to die. Moment. Like, yeah, I, was just, I was just enjoying the moment mm. sort of thing. And, and then after then, it, I wouldn't say it died down, but I was just training with them all the time. I didn't play any more schoolboy games because the reserves was basically whoever didn't play in the first team played in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I was playing a load of those games and then he said, all right, we're taking you to Port Vale. So I was like, all right, fine. Got on a Port Vale, kit too flipping big for me. Like <laughs> couldn't, couldn't even see my legs or yeah. anything. Sleeves <laughs> were like all the way down there. Got on at half, just after half time was losing one nil and ball came in. I tried to claim it, but obviously it went down as an own goal, but <laughs> It, it went in and yeah. we draw the game 1-1. One, one and I, after then it kind of just kicked on mm. until Kevin Keegan came in. Mm. Okay, that sounds like a, is that, is there issue there? With no, you? no, 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 no issue there. It was just the way it happened in football kind of gave me an inkling of how football can go from here yeah. and then just stop mm -hmm. for a time being for whatever reason. It may not be your fault, it may be your fault, it might just be a preference or an opinion. And his reason at the start was, I'm too small to play the way he wants to play. Get it long, he, to the big man. Yeah. But he, was a, he was the same size as me. In my head, I'm yeah. yo, Kevin yeah, Keegan, yeah, Kenny's yeah. the last yeah. person to be able to say this. That's what I'm saying. So as a player coming through, I'm like, all right, now I'm kind of confused yeah. because you as a winger, attacking player, yeah. you're not that much bigger than me. Now you're saying I'm too small mm -hmm. to play the way mm -hmm. you want to play. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you're not playing long ball, which he didn't because we've seen him at Newcastle yeah. in those games before, uh, what, what what height do I need to be? Because I definitely ain't growing no more. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And then the fans, as the season went on, the fans just started, paper started writing about it. Mm. Then he said, you know what? Can you play right wing back? I said, I could play anywhere on that pitch <laughs> as long as I'm on the pitch. Yeah. So I just learned right wing back on the fly, basically. Okay. You know and what stands was, out to me though? Because like, obviously we've had conversations, obviously the Marge kicks ball and he's in that situation where he's like getting his steps in and like, obviously your dad had what he had to face. And everything. So, so it's like, even if that information is passed on to you, you still have to experience it. Like there's so much it's you can say. Way but you have to go through it because I'm sure your dad would have told you, listen, there's, there's going to be times where it's going to be a bit shaky, but until you're facing that moment, no one can help you. Like, this is what people <laughs> don't understand. Like my kids, they, as soon as they go in their change room, they can't, it's not like they can just phone me and say, dad, mm -hmm. can you come up? You need to show me the skill. I can't do nothing. Yeah. Like once you're there, you've earned the right to be there to showcase how you got there. Mm -hmm. And then everything kind of takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. Well, and and that Kevin Keegan season when he kind of gave you the chance at right wing was that the year in the championship was it yeah there, there was two years so they because I know they initially came up the first year in the Premier League and then they went back down and I felt like that year they went back, that was your almost breakout year would you say yeah but it took me long to score I think it took me like nearly a season to score no matter Damn. how many yeah. shots. I took the keeper either saved it or it hit the post or it just mm. went wide. Stop What's it. that like going through? Because you almost feel like you're breaking through now into the team, but now that rubber the green is not coming for you. It was, it was, that was tough. Yeah. I think if I was at any other club, but the club that I'm at, the way some of the fans do turn on players, mm. it could have made it a lot harder. Mm -hmm. I think the one thing that I had on my side is that they knew even if I didn't score, if somebody was running clean through Dan, I would have most probably run back and try and pack <laughs> yeah. it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like I was just hungry to do well all mm -hmm. the time. I just put the work in. Mm -hmm. um, but when that goal did finally come, I was like, thank fuck. <laughs> the problem that it was is that there was no City fans at the mm. time because Millwall and City fans always clash. Uh. So the leagues banned them from coming to each other's games. Yeah. So I scored at the Den 
with no city fans there. Damn. So local game for so, you as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, away, that ain't easy as well, bro. You know, for a black boy to score there. Trying to score. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just run back to the spot. <laughs> Pin the ball up. <laughs> See, do you remember what's funny? Do you remember what Alisa did this season when they played the FA Cup? And he scored. They started pelting stuff at him and he stood there like this. Oh, and this guy's man. built. He's built he's, different, he's bro. He's built different, man. <laughs> but that, but that kind of City team, um, when they did come back up, you was almost like the the shining gem, I would say, amongst a lot of experienced head at that time as well. I think Paul um, Huckabee, Huckabee was still there, Distan, um, Robbie Fowler just signed that season. Yeah, You'd come to the Premier Mac. League as well. Richard Dunn was yeah. still there. Sanji High, City yeah, Legends. Yeah. This, this, you know what I'm saying? This like, is City. Heritage. This is City. <laughs> this is, no, no, Guerrero. How long? How long? One chop. Storm Gota. Like yeah, real, yeah, real yeah. City Legends. Mm. But you was kind of. Like, what's it like being? almost a young whippersnapper, if you're like, amongst all these senior vets coming through. I just thought be different. Mm. Yeah. I think um, at that time, I was one thing City didn't have, or there wasn't a lot of going around. So as long as I could do what got me there in the first place at the level that they needed me to do, at, do it at, mm -hmm. plus add goals and create some goals and chances for people, mm. then I was heading in the right direction. Yeah. And and little things like, dad always said to me, if nobody notices you when you're walking on the street, that means you're doing something wrong. Yeah. Mm. So my aim was to basically get people on the edge of the seats. Mm. However it was, whether it was a tackle or just going past somebody like they wasn't there. Mm -hmm. If the, the crowd rolls when I got on the ball, mm -hmm. that's, yeah. Th that's the vote of confidence I needed. Mm. Was there was there anybody in that kind of period of time who you felt like took you under their wing or anything? To be fair, they all did because Paul Dickoff at the time as well. Because remember, he had played with Dad, yeah. so he was there as well. So it it, it was kind of weird because I played with so many players that Dad played with or played it's, against. Mm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. they all looked at me in a way like. We got we got to look we got after, to take, look after you. Get what I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah, they yeah. all had mutual respect for each other. Mm -hmm. And it just made it easier. But one person that showed me a whole different way to play was Al Berkovic. Mm. When he came, he was like the <laughs> they, one- The kids don't know these. They, they can completely they, school no, them. These are names. Hey, Al no Berkovic, bro. Like, bro like, this, this is not every team. Bro, this is Al not every team. Al Berkovic. No, you know, yeah. this is, he Berkovic. was the one touch master. Yeah. Mm. He was the best at it. Like I, I was known for just getting the ball and dribbling. Mm. When Al Berkovic came in though, he said, Sean, I know you can do all that stuff. I don't need you to do all that mm -hmm. stuff. I need you to just give me the ball, <laughs> run, and I'm going to play in between the centre back and the full back because I know you're going to get it. Mm. And then he built me up and taught me to make different sort of runs rather than running in a straight line. And then it got to the point where it's like any danger you score in, so I don't have to keep doing all, all the flipping running <laughs> sort of yeah, thing, yeah, right? Because yeah. I know he ain't running the other way. Yeah. So, and he said to me, I'll just score, don't worry. And then we had played Crystal Palace at Main Road. And I've given the ball, it's like the goal's just there. All he had to do was just tap it in. Just because the keeper's come running that way, I've run off to celebrate. He's tapped it back. To <laughs> <laughs> when he when I've turned back, he shouted. So I turned back and said, oh, just, why don't you just shoot? He mm. said, no, I wanted you to score. By the time I got there, I got a tackle like right in the side of my knee, just cut my knee open. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is like <laughs> your fault, <laughs> <ball>, bro. <laughs> just score. Yeah, but that, that was the type of player he was. He wasn't interested in scoring. Mm. Assisting man mm. and giving people those sort of passes was his thing, man. So uh, when is it that, so when is it that City moved away from main road? What year was that? To 2002. Two, two, yeah, right. After the games, weren't it? Yeah. 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 There was the a certain period for Man City where, let's keep it 100, right? It was only Sean Wright Phillips that was keeping them relevant, bro. It, no, it was only Sean, Joey bro, Barr was coming through no, the fans. No, 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 no. There was a period for Man City, yeah? There was a period for Man City where the only person you look forward to seeing was Sean Wright Phillips. He was that young, excitement. exciting. Yeah. He was like their original wonder boy, innit? Like their right, wonder yeah. That's what I meant. Foden to. before Foden, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but no, nah, he was like that original one. So, and I remember that was at the city of Manchester, yeah. it was called at the time, in yeah, yeah, Manchester yeah. Stadium. So, I mean, I think you definitely deserve those kind of flowers because 
Man United were obviously the ones that were dominating Manchester. It's not the same anymore. But at that point, it was definitely a situation. I remember, bro, like the only time you're tuning to City is to watch him on the long sleeve, yeah. baggy Oversized top, shit. dribbling like this. Yeah. Bum, bum, bum. You, I remember, bro. Yeah. Trust me, man. Yeah, even surprising that you're that quick. Like the aerodynamics of that baggy kit must have been like... like <laughs> yeah, those like, like, yeah, everyone used to be like, who's the fastest in the Premier League? Yeah. Is it is it Sean Wright Phillips? Is it um, Henri? Michael is it Owen. Um, Aaron Lennon? Yeah. Like, bro, them days, yeah. bro. Yeah, man. But even with what you're saying yeah do you know when it obviously you know but do you know when it clicked to me that this guy's actually like a city icon so there's before the arsenal city game live show now no guy comes up and he's literally like no you just don't sound like i just i love i love sean like i love and i was like that's that like mr like that's he's mr. got the man keys city. to the city yeah. i said he's mr man city yeah. <laughs> and even he's saying that about like Sean, yes, you know that like, it's real. Like his mm -hmm. his watch is real. Like they actually respect him full heartedly. But it's, everywhere you went, you had love. We'll get into stuff later. But everywhere you went, like this, it's very hard for a lot of players Apart to go from to Spurs. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's the yeah, yeah. <laughs> No joking. That one. No, 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 no. Oh, I was, no, you didn't that's play for Spurs. That, that, that only fans that used to play. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna <laughs> say you didn't play for Spurs. Why did that happen, bro? Even what the hell? I didn't see that. Remember, like, we have to go in. You always used to go on this revenge tour as well. Like any when you wherever you went to an old club, yeah, you put crash gold on them. You crash it. <laughs> that, nah, <laughs> not always. I'd never scored against C. Did you not? No, nah, never scored. But against you played C. well against C. Played all right. Like my, <laughs> when I left City the first time and I left Chelsea, my career was quite like yeah spells. And then when I went to QPR, it was just like boom. <laughs> Like it's, it was just weird. It's just, everything was just different and strange. No, I was going to say that that back end of that before you moved to City, those last two seasons, I think you hit double figures in both of them. Mm. What's that moment like? Because now you, you're, I'm sure you're starting to feel like the main man of the City team. As you're saying, that was all you kind of look forward yeah. to. But now you're putting up the numbers. Is England starting to become a thought at that point? Even well, Before that, people were talking for me playing for England. But yeah. back then you had to put in two, three solid seasons to get in. Tell them, England. please, not like, six on purple patches. Like some serious <laughs> grind time. And that didn't even get you a starting place. That mm. got you in, in the, the squad. <laughs> yeah. Training and then it was steps yeah. after that. But then what do you expect back then when you got people like David Beckham in front of you and Paul Skulls yeah. and Stevie G just floating around and then Lamps. There, there was talent beyond talent yeah. in that team at like the highest order. Mm -hmm. I think the only reason why people people always say we should have won it then, people forget how good the other teams were. If you look at like your Brazils and Thank your Spain, you. your Germany, Thank you got to understand France. what type of players in France, exactly mm -hmm. what type of players they had in that team as well. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Yeah, so as much as that era was a golden era, Think about the competition they was coming up against as well. Everyone felt like they was going through golden eras. So let's yeah. talk about 2004, right? The 2004, you know what moment I'm going to mention, right? 4-1, Manchester yeah. City versus Manchester United. Man Your United. team got ice, yeah. didn't it? Yeah, don't worry about that. Get our legs back. Don't worry about that. But 4-1, and you you scored the, the, the screamer, the stunner, mm. hit the crossbar, and then I remember that one. Did you feel at that moment there was like a, did your profile lift after that? Did you feel like a change? Cause that is still a goal that like Premier League websites and on this day, Sean Wright Phillips scored this goal. Like, <laughs> he knows still, the talk and everything. Yeah, bro, still, still, <laughs> still to haunts him, bro. bro. Still to this day that is mentioned, bro. So do you, did your like, did you get like a profile lift at that moment? Like was there a boost at no, all? No, I'm not. Not, not really. I don't, I don't think there was because I think at the time it went in as well. I was just more, that goal was like a nail in a coffin yeah. sort of thing because the game was effectively done. already done. Um, it was more of a surprise that, to be honest, that we was winning in that way mm. because you didn't have a baggy team out that day. You had mm. some serious players yeah. on that pitch. And um, I think that was like, for, especially for City in general, I think in Manchester, that was like the turning point where Man, Man United were like, raw. <laughs> They're not the noisy, not noisy neighbors anymore. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? They're actually carrying potential and threat that mm -hmm. can affect us. But even with the goal, like honestly, I was so tired before, the mm. ball just wouldn't roll off the pitch. I <laughs> thought it was gonna roll off the pitch. It just <laughs> carried on rolling straight down <laughs> yeah. the line. And then the fad started, so I was like, why not? Let me just, 
have a goal sort of thing. Yeah. I just went for it. But um, you know, yeah, I don't know about so much about the profile. Mm. I, d I don't really read into stuff like yeah. that. It doesn't, it doesn't really bother me. If but, Streets of right. Manchester, you must get hounded that after that. Were, you, were people like giving mad love after a derby win like that? Yeah, but see in Manchester, from you're an academy player and you're known through the academy, if you walk out, people know you. Oh, okay. If it's Man C anyway, I don't know what it's like for mm. Man United, but you get, it's always been like that in Manchester. Okay. Just just before we kind of move on into Chelsea and everything, I, there's two incidents I kind of want to touch on during this Man City period. Um, speaking of families, you played with Haaland Senior as well, <laughs> yeah. if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Alf. Alf Inge Haaland. <laughs> yeah. you, would you, so you would have been at the club when the knee injury happened. What was kind of the atmosphere like at the club seeing a player retire from an injury? Because I don't think I can even recall now that being as frequent thing as it happened even back no, then. No, yeah. So what was that like seeing that oh, one of my teammates has actually retired from an injury in football? Especially being young, it was more of a scary thing than mm -hmm. anything because me being a winger, I'm taking what, maybe, I mean, depending on the day, 10 tackles mm -hmm. that sh most probably yellow or red cards yeah. nowadays. Mm -hmm. They were just normal yeah. tackles back then, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So from that perspective of it, I was like, okay, I need to be a little bit smarter in the yeah. way I'm doing things. And from the other, what, other side of it, it's more like, felt sorry for him because football career is short enough already mm. and it kind of just got made instant mm. anyone that retires from injury i feel sorry from like mika the same thing with him yeah he, he had to retire when he didn't want to and there's loads of players out there um but i think the the hardest one to deal with was the mark vivian that was that that was that was like a mad reality check to just life mm. in general and the way City handled it was was amazing. They took care of his family and everything like that. But still, I played with him. I trained with him. He was perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Then goes away. Confederation just, Cup. Just nothing. Mm -hmm. just, and I just couldn't understand it. Obviously, now we've seen it a bit too regularly for yeah. my liking across all sports. Mm -hmm. So it is a scary thought to think. But um, what was the atmosphere like after that? After a moment like that? Obviously, as you mentioned, you go away for international break and a guy doesn't come back, you know? What was the atmosphere in the in the camp? Because you still had to continue playing. You that's, still had to, had your head screwed on. That's, that's kind of the thing though, like as down as you are, you start playing for that guy, mm. that man. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? He, he's with you when you're playing. Mm. Like it, it is hard to play, but it's one of those, the, the job that we're in, we can't just say, all right, I'm not playing this weekend. Mm. Do you know what I mean? We kind of have to get on with it. So we, ha we, we carried him everywhere with us that season. Right. Use it almost as fuel to kind of push you that next yeah, level. Yeah, we, we wanted and, to and do I, so. And I remember at that time thinking that was, that was right. something Trust. so crazy. So I can only imagine what it would have been like <laughs> in the, in the actual room. dressing room. Yeah. And then as you said, having to switch on the next week for a game or yeah. as much as you want to use it as fuel, that's still someone who you shared a dressing yeah, room with, exactly. even though he was on, and that's someone who the whole season you were family. Yeah. Literally, as we say, listen, we're podcast mates, yeah. imagine teammates. So yeah. it's a just whole different more bond, but- The actual family, if you think about yeah. it. Yeah. Something like that to just happen, it must be like weighty. Like proper mm. weighty and scary. And, and, that, and that City team, like there were so many big characters within that as well. Joey Barton was another one I wanted <laughs> to touch on as well. You must have a Joey Barton. <laughs> <laughs> no, and you there, must there's have a, a Joey there's Barton. There's a particular one He's I want to ask about as well. Is it? Yeah, bro, the guy's, the, the, you listen, there's Joey, a lot of bad talk on time. this guy, right? Mm. Yeah. This guy, I'll go to war with him anywhere in the world. Yeah. He went to war with Usman Dar <laughs> in training. And that was our time. <laughs> I weren't there then, so I weren't there. I just got the phone calls. Oh, yeah. What was that, was that, was that as a team? Was that, Cause I remember around that time, Lee Bowyer and Dyer had their thing yeah. as well. And it was football like- was Football was getting- Football was getting- Real men were out. Real men. <laughs> but I was, I was gonna say, if anything, like, well, you was part of the squad at that time though, weren't you? No, he, he's no, he, he, I, was I, you at Chelsea there, at that I was time? At Chelsea. Yeah. Uh, but you mentioned the phone call because obviously we had Carlton on not too long ago <laughs> and obviously he was talking about the mad situation that happened and he talked us through like what it was like getting the phone call from that. And we were like, raw, like, yeah. these guys are just human beings. What's it like just randomly chilling? You get brr, brr. It's like, yeah, there's been a mad thing on the ground. Like, what, what's that phone call at? <laughs> they, they, well, they phoned me and basically, Nadem, if I remember correctly, I think it was Nadem, yeah, Nadem, Nadem was that called guy, me. Man. And he said, bro, you need to speak to your boy. I was like, what's he done, man? Like, <laughs> that's, that's your boy. You know? <laughs> like, they were coming he's through just, together. He's just, he's just jumped the army. I said, what do you mean? He said, Sean, he jumped him. He was down and he just carried on going. 
So listen, I I don't know nothing. I haven't seen nothing, mm. so I can't say nothing. But if he has, like, it something has to happen. Eh? He has to get a final yeah. sign because there's certain things that are violation, yeah. and there's certain things that are not. If he swings and he yeah. swings back, then yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. But if he's just jumped in, yeah. it was a yeah. bit. It's a bit techy, and it so. <laughs> <laughs> but you with, <laughs> with, with, with Joey Barton, like. Everyone has a different recollection of Joe Barton and he's been in the media for those reasons. He's been in the media for saying Neymar's just a YouTube footballer. Like, there's so much stuff. But what is Funny, what funny. is Joey Barton actually like? Because one, that? first and foremost, there was a time where he was actually a rated player. People seem to forget yeah. that. But what's he like as a person? I feel like you've got to have a mad Joey Barton story. He's, so first of all, yeah, I'll tell you one story, but you will understand from the first, the, when I tell you the story, mm why people have that perception of him. But um, in general, he, as a guy, honestly, like I said, I've been, I've been, everyone gets in altercations to do. So mm -hmm. me, Joey, we've gone to like, where did we come? We went to a club in Kensington. And then my cousins from South said to me, they're coming. So I said, all right, cool, cool. Well, me and Joey, it's just me and Joey and we've got a table. I said to Joey, my cousins coming, they're wicked. I get to meet them finally. So I said, all right, <laughs> sweet. So they all came in. And then of course, as things do, they, something happened, it got a bit heated. My cousins are in some madness down there. So I'm like, cuz I can't get involved in this no more. <laughs> so he said, I don't want you involved. So he pushed me away and we've come out, me and Joey, and I swear, 10 guys circled her. Oh, sh Joey just looked at me and said, Sean, you good? I said, yeah, I'm blessed, bro. He said, all right, cool, let's do this. <laughs> and then, no, honestly, bro, I swear, he had my back mm, yeah. from that day, like I've been like, Okay, cool. I, I get, yeah, but he's one of those people that like, if he tries to bully you mm. and you don't stand up for yourself. I said that mm. Michael Jordan. Then he, just don't, then he just don't like, he just don't like you. He likes yeah. men that, that stand up for themselves. Mm -hmm. mm. And that, that was like how I think me and him started getting on. Cause we, they put us together in a mm. room and we was just rooming together and we was just having a chat and then I always used to bring my PlayStation with me because man don't watch soaps or none of them. Mm, things. So mm. I'll just play Pro Evo. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. He's playing Championship Manager. Hmm, but real this real one, this one tri trip, this guy thinks he can play Championship Manager and watch TV. Mm. So I said, no, 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 no. You can't have both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like there's two men in there. We have to figure it out <laughs> some way. I said, it can't work like that. Mm. And he said, all right, you take the TV. I'll play my champ. So I was like, cool. And then he said, you know what, Sean? And he was honest. He said he's never been in a situation. I said, so what do you mean? He said, I've never roomed with a, a person of color before. Wow. He said that he was honest. Like he spoke openly and honestly. Mm -hmm. I said, why? He said, this just where I grew up in Liverpool. There isn't, mm. isn't that. I've never had that situation in football. So he said, um, this is all new to me. I said, don't worry about that. I'm blessed, man. You, yeah. do, you yeah. do your thing, I do my thing. Yeah. Just, just don't like mess sort of thing. Yeah. And we've, we've just meshed since then. Yeah. Like even if he kicked me in training, I'll just turn around and say, Joe, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Yeah. <laughs> and he'll say to me, you know what I'm like, Sean. I'm saying, just chill out, man. Yeah. We play together. Like, <laughs> you're not meant to hurt each yeah. other. Yeah. Sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. there's been Matt, I've did some brilliant stories with him, mm. but he he's not what people think. Mm. But when he does see red, He's gone. Mm. Mm. Yeah. That's the only problem, but it's kind of yeah. hard. That's what you said though. Yeah. It's like, um, kind of like product in your environment. It sounded like, not similar, but you know, when there was like mad stories of like Gerard, like in the club, like just yeah. like, it's, it's when you're, Rooney, the same thing. Yeah. Like when you're from like a certain environment, it's almost like programmed to react a certain way. And you have to do a lot of unlearning because when you're traveling through football, you're going through so many different cultures, different places, you're meeting different people. So you have to like- Strike is the kind of personality as well. You love them when they're on your team. Yeah. And when you hate not it, on your yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. If I played against them, I'd hate it. Yeah. 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 You you hate it. It's yeah. like, oh my God, I gotta face this guy. Like he, yeah. he was good yeah. though. Like honestly, <laughs> for me, when I was playing at City, he was the midfielder like at a time that I needed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause he would just go into those tackles, come out, and he would just play it simple. He mm -hmm. wouldn't try anything fancy. He would just get me the ball yeah. and he'd say, Sean, go and do your do thing, sort of thing. If it doesn't work, mm. I'll get it again sort of thing. So as a footballer for me, he was perfect, especially at that time. Mm. And if he kept his discipline right, mm. he could have gone on to do a lot of things because he was the midfielder at that time that everybody wanted, yeah. that yeah. enforcer, yeah. that gives the ball to the people to do the rest of the work. Yeah. I remember, with with a shot I remember well. when I was playing, yeah. I remember when I was playing football and there was, um, my coach came in and was like, oh, um, 
So everyone here thinks that you're you're all, you all think you're great footballers, right? And everyone's just like you know we're embarrassed and stuff. Yeah, He's yeah. like, you guys all want to take all these touches, blah, blah blah. All right, cool. I compiled. He compiled some report from when QPR when Joe Barton was at QPR. He's like, how many tu- how how many seconds do you think Joe Barton had on the ball in this game? And we're all like two minutes, three minutes, twenty five seconds for the whole match. He had the ball for twenty five seconds. He's QPR gone. won the match. He got man of the match. He had the ball collectively for 25 yeah. seconds. Pass and move control. Yeah. Mm. Pass and move control. Yeah. Madness. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. how you run a game. But so with all of that, yeah, because ultimately you've got, you had a lot of lived experience at City. Like that was, like you said, that was home. How hard was that decision when it was t- the, to, to move to Chelsea? I didn't make it. But how hard was it to even I that? just got... <laughs> <laughs> they just literally said... <laughs> they saw the money. I said, hey, I said it was a trick. Roman's calling that, that Russian <laughs> money. <laughs> uh, do you know what? It wasn't even like that, um, to be fair. Like, I I just grew up yeah. as a naive little kid, in it? Like, you think you're happy here. Yeah. You could just stay here forever yeah. Yeah, and yeah. just play ball, innit? Like, yeah. I wasn't... Didn't think about the money or sides of it like that. To when my agent phoned me and told me, I said, no, no, I'm cool. I'm happy, <laughs> happy right. where I am. Yeah. And he said, but they've accepted the, tra- the fee. I said, yeah, but I never said I wanted to leave. So I didn't quite understand how it worked. Just, and then he said, no, you have to leave. So I was like, all right. So then I told some of the players, they said, Sean, you can't play in this friendly. Mm. So we've got to the friendly and Stuart Pierce was a manager at that time. I said, Pierce, I, I can't play because I was advised by the senior players just in case something happened not mm. to play. So I said, no, I understand. Before the game even started, it was like a driver outside <laughs> the stadium. And then Waiting I, to collect. Yeah, and then I was just in a car on the way to London to do a medical. Until you got abducted. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've no, never heard no, deals no. like this. So Usually it happens. it's like, yo, back and forth, you know, no, taking like, oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> So some of them like just happened like that. So then I just went down there and it, in, it until I reckon six to eight months into my Chelsea contract, I found out then that the club didn't have no choice to sell me. Otherwise they would have gone under. under yeah. So they had to sell me. But it meant that much to kind of them. save City. What? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. What, mm-hmm. That's what, what they love you more. Statue, yeah. please. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> Before you had the money, who'd you <laughs> have? <laughs> who <laughs> saved the club? Who, was there who gave the you beginning? excitement? Bro. Statue, please. <laughs> right next to company. <laughs> hey. hey, the training complex. Hey, All right, bro, minute, minute. hey. <laughs> listen. Speaking of the training complex, man's got a whole road on the estate in South named after him, bro. Yeah, that's lit. Legacy. We need something man. Trust me. But when you when you make that move from City as well, it's a whole different level now you're going up to as well. Because yeah. City weren't really competing for Europe at that time. But Chelsea, this is prime. I'm Chelsea having just won their first title. Sheesh. I'm Jose as yeah. well. Yeah. Tell me what that that aura is like walking into that, do <laughs> that you, first do you, moment. Do yeah. you do you are you preempting it? Or are you kind of just thinking as you've always been laid back, just calm going into this, or is this kind of no, that? That was it. that's kind of a different feeling. I think it's dad's fault. Why I felt like why my feeling my mood <laughs> changed a bit. <laughs> what happened? Because when we was walking into Stamford Bridge for me to actually sign the contract, I'm just walking as a as you saw me on the street corner, just just yeah. chilling doing like, me. It's <laughs> 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 just chilling and just walking, and I'm with Dad and Mitchell Thomas, and we're just walking down. And he's just laughing, giggling and stuff like that. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? Mm. He said, anyway, why are you acting like somebody's going to rob you or something? Mm. I'm just excited my son signing for Chelsea. He said, and you excited? I said, I am, but I'm just a lot calmer <laughs> than you are sort of thing. <laughs> so when I've gone in there and when I did actually walk into the dressing room, I think what I had, which helped a lot, is that I knew some of the players before. Mm. So like Bridgie. Lance, um, Lance yeah, yeah, yeah. JT, Joe Cole. I, Joe, Cole. Joe Cole, I knew them before. Yeah. So that, and some of them I knew from playing against, like Makalele and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it, it made it a little bit easier. Transition. But then when you get on the training pitch, <laughs> then it's mm-hmm. like, okay. <laughs> you gotta be on your P's and Q's <laughs> all the time. Mm. Like you had to be on all the time to the point where Mourinho was thinking about making us wear shin pads in training. The way SEM was tackling, man. I knew it was going to be. The way S was going through people. Him and John Obi, it was like, it was nuts. But it it was, I think it was one of my favorite experiences, just playing with people like that, having to test yourself 
every day because if you wasn't, then you wouldn't why, play. Yeah, like, yeah. so you had to keep yourself in and around that elite because you're either playing on your bench. As soon as you mm-hmm. drop past a certain level, as nice as Mourinho was, he didn't play because he wanted to win games. Mm. And that that was the fact of the matter. What was that sort of like relationship with him? Because obviously it's a very different caliber and type of manager that he had previously. I know, I know you mentioned you had the Kevin Keegan situation, but like meeting this maverick who's saying, I am this guy and everything. Like what was your sort of relationship with him whilst you were there? Really, really good. Mm-hmm. Never had one argument, nothing. We got to be honest, we got on like a house on fire. Mm-hmm. Like I could bring my kids training because like I was single, I had two kids. They would come down and stay with me from Manchester. Mm-hmm. Could bring them training. My daughter would be with his secretary. My son would be watching us train. Mm. While we was warming up or training, Mourinho would be kicking a ball with him with a notepad. Mm. Yeah. And when I went to QPR, <laughs> when I went to QPR, the first thing he did when he saw me was saying, how's the boy doing? Mm. Like well, we got on like, house. I don't have a bad word to say. So I was, was, was going to say man. that about you. It always feels like every club he's been to inter, same thing. But Jose always seems to find ways to connect with his players. Mm. What was that moment where you feel like he connected with you? Or was there like a, or if there was a moment? The fact that he kept the team together. I think if you look at City's team now, mm-hmm. Arsenal's will be there soon. But if you look at, if how, how do you keep 21 players at that level all happy? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you've got to know them on a personal level. Yeah, you've got to understand you've got to them. Yeah, yeah. you've got to, yeah. you've got to understand that. them. So he managed to keep everybody together. Whoever played, we was all supporting the other one, mm-hmm. even if we didn't play. Because that was my first experience of rotation. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't, yeah. I didn't understand this <laughs> rotation malarkey stuff. I didn't get it. Mm. I just thought if you're playing well, you're Keep playing. Yeah. That's it. And at that point as well, is Robin, is that the club? If I'm not like, <laughs> Arjun, Duff, 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 Duff Robin, Robin, Joe Cole. The treacherous twins. Training and we're at Man City, maybe you're the star boy turning up, training, you're killing everyone. You're now turning up to training. It's like- I'm a small star I got pond of big killers. Yeah. 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 yeah, I got killers all around me. What's that like turning up training day to day? That part didn't really bother me too much, to be honest, because I never watched anybody or really cared about anybody's status oh, for me it was okay. just more of like it's a privilege to play with you yeah sort of thing more than raw didier Drogba's over there mm. like i gotta do everything he <laughs> yeah. wants sort of thing no <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. we for whatever reason it was or how they perceived me as soon as i walked in we just all had an understanding where we would talk like lamps would have said to lamps said to me sean as soon as i open my body go <laughs> so it was like a footballing conversation so they yeah. seemed to have respected what I can do and me by making movements they asked me to, I respected that's, that's, what they, they needed and sort of thing. And that's just how we tried to build it. Yeah, so with obviously you went, as we mentioned, we mentioned all these players, you mentioned Robin and stuff. He went on to be a legend of the game and all that. When you had these players around you, for example, like John Terry's and stuff, were they the ones that were like, did you see like a different level in their mentality from Jose through to them or when you were when you were playing compared to of course when you're like at Man City was was there like a, a core of leaders? I think it was a, a like a, a family unit. Mm. The the will to win, the drive, the determination. Don't get me wrong, when we had time to go out, all through the years that we were winning, as a team, there would be like sixteen of us out. Like if we won in the Champions League, we were allowed out. We mm. would go out as yeah. 16 people and have fun. Mm. You can't so much now because of all the social media and all that malarkey yeah. and people frowning. But w- when we was playing well, we we was enjoying that time as well as a team. And I think all those times away from the pitch together made us the team we were mm. on the pitch. We just formed relationships. Mm. The thing that stands out for me is ultimately you have this unique perspective because you're at Chelsea at a point where it's happening, big things are happening. You're close to City where they were on this journey of making things happening. From like a, a, a broader perspective, are there like similarities between how they both went about it or how did it feel or how did it feel being part of one and seeing the other? One of the rare players to play in both of the I think takeovers. takeovers. Yeah. They were completely different. Speaking. I think Chelsea's was more instant mm-hmm. and maintained on buying players already at that prime elite level yeah. to continue on dominating the league or mm. finishing second or doing well in the Champions League. Whereas I think City's was built. 
mm. brick by brick by brick. That's that's how I see it. And I think because of that is the reason why City's longevity will go on for longer. They might not win as many European trophies as Chelsea has done. Mm-hmm. They might do, they might not. But yeah. as for how well they do in the Premier League, because of the way and the structure of the club's been done, I feel like it will go on for longer. That foundation mm-hmm. is there, right? Yeah. Chelsea's takeover was aggressive, man. They just it got was. their cake up, boom, get me Crespo, get me Varane, get me this, but mm. it was a little bit you different. Because that could have been you guys. When, <laughs> Could have been Spurs. Me like, I feel sick of myself like, every time I remember. But it was like the first year. You got to remember how aggressive it was when Claudio Ranieri. It didn't work out. It was like okay, Joseph after yeah, semi final, yeah. you know, after semi final, back straight away, and it was like best defensive record. Was that the- no? That wasn't the season. That was, that was the second season. season. He came season. second season. So the yeah. first season. The was first the season was the record, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, I was gonna say because that would have been yeah. crazy yeah, defense yeah. to be a part of. So, as well. so you obviously you, you just mentioned Frank Lampard. You know he you played with him and. And of course, he was an unreal player. But did you see him going into management? And in a way, what do you think of about his managerial career right now? Because some people are saying maybe he should have done the coaching for a little bit longer before going straight into management. But yeah, but firstly, did you see him becoming a manager? And what do you think about how it's turned out? Uh, to be honest, I didn't... <laughs> I didn't think him or JT would become managers um, mm. from playing with them. They never really talked about it. There was always like some players that were taking notes, doing drills with some of the young li- mm. kids like you see some of them doing now. So I never expected them to do it. it and it did take me by surprise, especially when he took the Derby job early. Mm. I didn't, I, that I didn't see coming either. I think when in your career, when opportunities like Chelsea and teams like that come up, especially as a young manager and a legend of the club, it's kind of hard to turn down. I think if you look at Vincent Kompany's situation, he got a chance, he's done really, really well. Chelsea was sniffing around him. He just shut it down straight away because he feels like he still wants to learn. I think you're never gonna know whether you're ready in a way until you do it. I think Vinny, just knew mm-hmm. why he turned it down. Lamps, I felt like at the time, he he didn't know whether he was ready. It, it's, it's a gamble, isn't it? Mm-hmm. For any manager, as you've seen, if you, to take the Chelsea job, it can go two ways. You can do really, really well and still get a sack. Mm-hmm. Or you can do really, really poorly and get the sack yeah. in six months. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's in a way, in, in football terms, it, it's a risky job for a manager. I, I think for me, just watching from the outside, I feel sorry for him, especially the time he's gone back now because the club for me is in in a very, very bad way. Mm. So it's a hard job for any manager that goes in there. Mm. I think the first time when he got the sack, I think people don't give him enough credit for the players that he brought through because there Mm. wouldn't be no Mason Mounts. No one would be talking about Reese James. Mm -hmm. Conor Gallagher wouldn't have been seen because he wouldn't have been on loan at Crystal Palace. Mm. So there's so many good things that he has done. But at the same time, I still think he's an apprentice in the game, mm. just like Stevie G, just like Vincent Company. They're all still learning the tricks and mm. trades of being a manager and how to deal with like the egos yeah. and the arrogance, arrogancy levels of certain players. I think if you got he's gone to Everton, I think that could have been a good decision, but it never worked yeah. um, <laughs> under proven manager in that same squad, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's almost like everywhere he's gone at the minute, apart from Dar- Derby, he's fighting a losing battle. Yeah. Mm. So he's never, for me, been at a just zero yeah. where he can just like go, all right, let me try and implement. Mm. But then at the same time, the football world's a harsh world. Yeah, mm. You have to learn quick if you're in it. Mm-hmm. So I think that it could go either way for him. Yeah. So I can't just ask you, because you mentioned that, you know, your career went through this phase where it was kind of like topsy-turvy, but the way you played, especially in that time, was very synonymous with what it was to be a winger. And of course you're seeing the game adapts now we've got forwards and everything. Do you feel like the art of like wing play being direct is being lost a little bit in modern game? I used to think that until Matomo and Nonto, <laughs> until Nonto from Leeds <laughs> and Matomo came around this year, I was go- I was kind of getting to there because people asked me and the people say, well, well they wing a squad. I said, there is no wingers. They're mm-hmm. inverted strikers. Yeah, They're just yeah. an extra striker. But then the way Matomo, especially what I saw him do yesterday, boy, I was like, yeah, man, yeah, I'm ben wing is problem. back, boy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but those two like have really, really impressed me. Like mm-hmm. they both go to the byline, left or right for, it's nice to see that. And I still, to be honest, think there are some out there. I just think the way teams are set up now, 
don't allow them to play like that mm-hmm. sort of thing. Because even what you're saying, like back in the day, like if you were like young, the first thing a coach would say, get chalk in your boots. Mm-hmm. It's just synonymous, get wide, yeah. be direct. You were saying the first thing you had on your, in your head was get on the ball and just go on the run. But now maybe because it's coaching and whatnot, everything's like the intricacies, like you just don't see that, that entertaining, mm-hmm. get up on the edge of your seat, oh my gosh, he's going to take on five players. Yeah, I think he's coming back. I, I do think it is coming back. I think it's just going for a phase where I feel like if, if you look at say, I use see it as an example, because it's got Jack. Jack at Villa just gave him the ball pretty much like how it was for me at City mm. and he just went like this. It didn't matter whether he lost the ball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, Jack has both to his game. Mm-hmm. Whereas before he only had one. Mm-hmm. So now it's just about <laughs> picking. Right it's about <laughs> picking and choosing mm-hmm. when to do it, when not. When I used to be played, they used to give me the ball at the half at, at the start of the game and the manager used to say, Go at him mm-hmm. for a minute go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whether I lost the ball or not, it's just showing intent. Whereas now you can show intent in so many different ways within the mm, game. The way Jack has yeah. grown with in Man City for me is incredible. Mm. Through all the stick he's got, everything that he's learned at Villa, everything he's learned at Pep, for me is kind of all coming together now. Mm. Mm. Like we're not talking about it enough though. This guy, he's a Premier League champ, bro. So, he's a Premier League <laughs> champ. On. Let's talk about the, obviously the moment that Chelsea became champions. Now you've gone from relegation battles, main road, all of this stuff to actually being a Premier League champion with a legendary Chelsea side, of course, Jose Mourinho, all of that. What was it like to get your hands on the Premier League title? And like, what was the moments in that where you're like, I'm playing for a special, special team. It's one of those things as a kid, like you, you dream of just playing football. Yeah. Mm. That's your, that's like your first step. But then when you actually do make it, then it's like, you want to be a first team regular. Mm. That happens. Then now you're mature. People say your consistency and your level of performance is really, really good. And then now, then you can look towards like other things. You can start setting your targets elsewhere and, then it became apparent, like, I would love to win stuff, but mm-hmm. I, do I want to leave City? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like, so maybe if I'd stayed at City and they didn't need to tell me, I probably wouldn't have won, maybe mm-hmm. wouldn't have won nothing. That's that Harry Kane's fact. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, so <laughs> yeah, I, didn't, I, I didn't say that. Listen, didn't, listen man. Right. I didn't say that. I can catch the street. How? Man. How, Sway? Listen, man. So it, 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 it becomes like a choice, isn't it? Mm. And luckily, I kind of got forced into my choice. But yeah. then to be in a position and in a team, we're like, right, I actually have a real chance of winning the Premier League trophy. Mm. And then when you're on the run and it's going there and it's it's quite um, relentless. And this is what a lot of people don't get about football and say like Arsenal situation now. And like, it is honestly relentless, mm. mentally draining. There's never a day off. Everybody says you don't think about it. You do. Mm. On your day off, you don't want to do nothing with your family or your kids. Mm-hmm. Like you just want to be it's in that good. zone. You want to conserve as much energy yeah. mm. as possible. You, did, you pretty much have no real mental social life because you're still thinking about it. And even if you're not thinking about it, one of your friends are going to ask you about it or somebody's going to question you about it. So it's always there. And it's just like back to back to back. And I remember, and especially if you're at that time, we was doing the Champions League run as yeah, well. Yeah. And I remember saying to Mourinho, like, why didn't you tell me it was going to be like this? He said, why? I said, because I just wouldn't have bought a house. I could have just lived in the hotel because I'm just there <laughs> all the time. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's always just go, go, go. But then when that reward comes at the end and you pick it up, you're like, okay, mm. I get it now. Mm. Sort what, of thing. Like, What was that conversation with your dad like? Because obviously like, you know in the back of your mind like that is what's possible and you've now done it. Like, what was that moment like with him? He's a crybaby. You know? I, <laughs> I guarantee he, he cried. I, I guarantee he called him crying, bro. Like, I'm proud of you. Yeah, bro. No, he, was, he was really, really proud. He just basically, like, obviously he had a few tears. He, like, but he mm. was like, you deserved it. You worked so hard to mm. get to where you are. Mm. Just enjoy the glory and make sure you have fun with it. And mm. the next year was is always harder. Mm-hmm. Mm. That is why what Man United achieved when they did it and what City are doing now, people don't understand how hard it is to, to have that winning mentality and not have a dip of after you've had that success. Mm-hmm. Sometimes for some people it's nearly impossible, but these two teams just... <laughs> what's the what's the hard component of it? Cause you know, some people will hear that and they'll be like, why is it hard? You've done it before. Like what, as like from a footballer's mind, 
what makes it so difficult the having to sort of go back to that level again the mental the, the mental side of it because it is it's so exhausting it's like relentless so if you look at even if you look at Liverpool situation where they had played the most games in the season because they got to the final every of final. everything yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like do you know what I mean and then you, you, if they won them all then the next year it's like okay we have to do that all again that's nearly mm -hmm. 70 odd games man mm. Like just thinking about it, yeah. It's like, and that squad is thin compared to like, say, cities now. They don't have the same depth with the same quality. So, mm. to do it is just hard, man. You just, but like you said, people from the outside world just think, yeah, well, you just want it, just mm -hmm. nothing. You can just but, do, just do it again. But yeah. all teams play differently now. Yeah. So now your challenge is even harder because most teams- You've got a target on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, they don't make it easier for you. And that's what Pep has even said, like with his Barcelona teams. He's he probably hard to motivate. He couldn't get that motivation out of them the fifth year or so. And now you look at this City team, they've won what, four out of the last five uh, seasons yeah. now? What do you mean? To keep that going again. And it's about to be number five now. It's like that level of elite mentality, I think it's like the biggest difference in sports you almost feel like. Mm. But it, you got to look at it as well. So it's not just the players, it even affects the fans. Mm. Yeah. Because the fans get to a point where they now just expect you <laughs> to win all the time. So they don't cheer as loud as say they usually would. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I like, yeah, yeah, they, yeah they just wait for the goal yeah. to go in. I, I, honestly. I went to the Arsenal um, City Arsenal <laughs> game, yeah, I went there. And there was a guy behind me consistently saying, these bellends, man, these dick. I'm like, bro, you don't know what you have. They're beating <laughs> Arsenal, their title, they're, they're gonna win the title. He's saying, oh, these bellends, man. I'm like, nah, man, these fans are ungrateful now, isn't it? That, that's Crazy. what I mean. So it's not just the players it affects. It actually has a runoff to, to fans as well, because people just expect you to be able to do it again. Yes. You know me, I'm, I'm deep thinker, introspective. We have these conversations all the time, but People don't realize that footballers are human beings as well. And like, you've always said that you're laid back. You told us that when you was a YT, you were coming back to London and everything. So it seems like you've got the ability to sort of separate. Yeah. But <laughs> how hard is it for some of those people in the change room to separate this? This thing that was supposed to bring them joy is now a job. Like, have you seen it in those change rooms change people or affect them? Like, what is it like being in the midst of it where ultimately it's relentless and you know, your family's there as well. You're not seeing your family. Can it really have that? massive toll that people don't see? Um, yeah, it can definitely have that massive toll. So I wouldn't shy away from that. I think for each person, it's, it's always going to be very different because I've always just seen football as fun and enjoyed it. And I was just lucky enough to get paid from it. Mm. Whereas then you've got some people that see it as a job and understand that's what it is. Mm -hmm. But then you've got that person in the middle, which enjoys it, but don't realise it's a job. Yeah. Now I would just was here. I weren't no middle ground. I just knew it's fun for me. Mm -hmm. Whatever comes with it, I'm going to enjoy it to the fullest. Yeah. But then that person in the middle is the person that struggles the most because he doesn't know which, which side yeah. he's at. Mm. Like I've played with know? players. Yeah. Yeah. I've played with players that, and, and he basically said to me, I don't love football that much. I don't watch football. Mm -hmm. It's my job. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm good at. This is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm the opposite to him. I watch football to this day. Any game that's on, I will watch. Yeah. Because I just enjoy watching it and seeing what other players bring to the table. Yeah. Mm. And obviously, because obviously my son and my daughter play now. Mm. So I keep an eye just to see What's how I can yeah, help yeah. them mm. become where they need, get to where they need to get to. So it's just finding that balance. Like I always remember people saying, what are you going to do when you retire? Like I already knew, my mom already told me from our 17, football ain't a long career. So. Mm. I knew at some point it's going to end. It ain't going to last forever. So when I did a Q and A the other day, and they asked me, I, I said, "Well, I already knew it wasn't going to last longer than twenty years. Yeah. Twenty years is lucky anyway." Mm. So I just said, "I just turned the page and got on with starting my new chapter." Yeah. However, it started like it might have been luck. How I fell into it, but I was ready, ready for that new chapter because I knew at some point it was coming. Mm -hmm. So I think within football, it's about preparing yourself for situation, and that even goes to the point of preparing yourself for your next game, you always have to be ready for the next challenge or the, the next chapter or the next page because with football, you're always on the go. Yeah. Like you're never stationary for too long. But with that fun, <clears throat> yeah. obviously you mentioned there's parts of your period where it was very dif um, difficult. So that how do you still sort of enjoy the game in those really difficult spells? Take myself away from the situation. Mm. That situation is happening to me. That's for me to deal with. Mm. That's not 
a, sh- a dark sh- cloud over the rest of the football. Mm. Like I feel like every situation is different. Every club you go to, like my time at QPR, started really, really well. Didn't score. Mm. Second part of the season, playing with floating bone in my ankle. Mm-hmm. Harry Redknapp comes in. He's not playing me. I decide to get an in- to get an operation against what he said because it just kept locking. Then the rumors start coming out. I'm only there for the money. Well, no. <laughs> Number that was the first point. Number two. I'm not just going to walk away from a club and go to a club which I don't think suits me. That was the second point. And then I went and signed for Red Bulls for way less money than I was getting offered anywhere else. So clearly, I wasn't there for the money. Yeah. It just has to, to suit me and my my family. Mm-hmm. I'm not just going to get up and walk. And I think that there's good, there, there will be a lot of that. I think at times people always say players ain't loyal and stuff like that. There's a lot of clubs out there that ain't loyal to players as well. Yeah. Speak on it, boy. So if the clubs can take care of themselves, the player needs to take care of himself because if he goes somewhere, you've seen a lot of players leave, go to clubs. Next thing you hear, they're suffering from health issues. They're not doing things right. Mm-hmm. And that's because they're unsettled. They're unhappy in where they've they've ended up is not yeah. what they wanted in life. Yeah. They feel like they just got forced into that corner. Mm-hmm. I just refused at the time to be forced. I never said I'm not going to leave. I was never a bad egg in training. Still trained just as good as anybody. You just didn't want to play me. Yeah. That's that's yeah. not my fault. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I, I was here effectively before you got here. Yeah. Mm. Now I don't have any bad blood against Harry. Mm. Like that's, that's his choice, isn't it? I know what football is mm-hmm. a matter of opinions and what people think. Mm. And, and that QPR period is actually like, we're jumping ahead of anything but that QPR period was such a crazy period at that time as well because you'd already been kind of part of let's say two takeovers what was that like when you came <laughs> made it look like I'm just following the money <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm the guy, I'm the guy. I'm the guy, I'm the guy. When you came after the city one, I feel like you were almost the poster boy for the the new era, if that if that makes sense. Like we're bringing Sean back, one of our own type of thing. And you actually went on to win the FA Cup as well. So I want to ask, hey, what did that moment feel like coming back to City? But then QPR as well. What was that like? That must have been a they whole case. different. <laughs> they only appro- they approached me before that. I didn't even know about that. Like, but when I left City originally, I always said before I retire, I'll play back. I'll be back. Yeah, sort of thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That option come up. Spurs was out there hovering. And, okay, I spoke to yeah, yeah, yeah. and I spoke to Jermaine. And I spoke to I spoke to my boy Jermaine, innit? it? Jammer told me. Hey, yeah, yeah, I phoned Jammer first and I said, like, talk to me. He told me some things. So I was like, all right, cool. I signed for City. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. What are the things? <laughs> <laughs> hey, sure, no, 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 no. What were the things? <laughs> hold on, hold I can't, on. I can't, I can't throw a man under the bus. We'll get the photo, we'll get the photo come on for that one. Hey, Jermaine, if you're putting man off the club, listen, we need to talk. Nah, it wasn't, it wasn't even like that still, but um, he knows what I'm like as yeah. a person. <laughs> And he just said to me, why, what's your options? I told him my options. He told me the situation. <laughs> and I just said, you know what, I'm going to go back to City because I might not get another chance yeah. to, to kind of stick yeah. to my word. Yeah. And then when I got back, they was talking about this takeover. I said, so why, you, why didn't you lot wait two days to sign me? Why didn't you sign me <laughs> then? You know but um, when I got there, then they was talking about like Robinho, Robinho. and stuff like that. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, whatever sort of thing. I wasn't really buying too much into it. And then we had the game against Sunderland away, I think it was. It was my first game. I'd only been in the training ground, what, 48 hours max. Trained one day, next day was on the pl- on the plane. I think we flew up to um, Sunderland. Mm-hmm. And For money. <laughs> Yeah, because the trains are mad at it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 trying yeah. to save people Time back. Well. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then, then I found out I was starting. I didn't even know I was starting. He just asked me am I fit enough, but I was never ever going to say no anyway. Mm-hmm. And that dark, that return just went, it couldn't have gone any better, obviously mm-hmm. scoring two goals. But then when you go to QPR, after being there and seeing the beginning and the start and the first quarter of that journey of where City are trying to take it, could you could what, you see the vision just before we move on? To, could you see the vision from that point when the um, new it. owners had come in? Could you see that? Oh, they're gonna. You said earlier they're laying it brick by brick. Is that what they told you guys as players when they came? No, in as you well? could if you understand the way. Like it, you will, will get it because you've been around football long enough, like to understand that 
there's like instant success mm -hmm. and then there's slowly gradually built yeah. yeah do you know what I mean and the, just the type of players they didn't just go and buy like six players mm. first one was Rabinia mm. then there was your Les Scots and your Nigel yeah. Dijon's then they kind of sat back for a little piece. Yeah. Then they bought a few more players, and then you got your David Silva, yeah. Da yeah. yeah, David Silva, and then um, Aguero. Aguero, then Vincent. Like mm. then, do you know what I mean? Then it started just bulking out. Yeah, so yeah. they've had depth. Yeah. If you think about the depth City's had from the then, thing, mm -hmm. yeah. all they've done is just move players out and move players in. Mm -hmm. They haven't like they don't just keep bulking up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like they they sell players on. Like if you think how much C City made, yeah, they're they're selling million, players, man. bro. Yeah, yeah. It's two hundred and fifty million worth mm -hmm. of players they got in the summer that they sold. Mm -hmm. They spent less than they sold. Mm -hmm. So you can see that from little things like that, you can see this has always been where they wanted to be at. Yeah. Winning that FA Cup was almost like the, you would say the start of City's silverware legacy, if mm. you like. Yeah. It was almost a turning point. Being part of that, what did that feel like? Obviously having seen where City came from, obviously you initially joined when they were going through financial troubles. Yeah. But now you're at a point where the whole scenario is different. You're on your way to this FA Cup. Yaya Torre kills it in the semi-final. Mm. You're now going into the final. And also, does that FA Cup win mean more to you than that league win with Chelsea? Just Ooh. that curiosity. Mm. It, can, it can never mean more in football terms in respects of winning the Premier League compared to the Cup. Like, because the Premier League, some of the greatest players have mm. never even touched. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So, <laughs> so do you get what I mean? So yeah. I would I would never ever compare the two. I think they're both important just as equally, especially in my career. I think yeah, I think just winning something for Man City in general after being there so many years and coming through the ranks and stuff was just period flat down was like an emotional time. Yeah. Like even to the point when I was at QPR when they won the Premier League, the first thing I asked Mark Hughes is can you make the bus wait so I can just stay and watch the boys pick up the trophy? Yeah. You see this? No, right, no, no. So. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean about that game? <laughs> no, you see what I mean? I've been no, telling you. We're going to talk about the game. I've been, no, I've, no, no, just, no. I've been we're telling you. The long time game. game was rigged. <laughs> <laughs> now he wants to see trophy break. Dribble C says, just. <laughs> With Nazri. Joey Barton. This is Joey Barton getting that Buki yeah. record. Yo, uh, nah, something went right. right. We're going to talk about the game. Because, no, you, did, no, you just told us you were celebrating. You were, I was celebrating. You were celebrating. You were celebrating. You were what, celebrating what time? Man. Let's get into it. Because obviously, Jolyn came on and he told us about the game. Obviously, he told us about the mistake he made in their fit. And he just told us how mad it was. I want to hear your perspective on that whole, <laughs> that the whole mm -hmm. spill. I want to hear your perspective. Cool. I need to finish the question. Yeah, yeah. go on, go on. Let's, yeah, finish, yeah. let's finish the question. So, <laughs> when I went to, when we went to QPR, it was kind of just like monopoly. They didn't think about, can this player play with this player? How would this player suit this team? It was almost, right, there's some names here. Let's just go and get these names. Mm -hmm. Park yeah, they just just kept yeah. going and getting these names. They never thought about the players that were there before yeah. or how the synergy and all that stuff would all work together. And as you can see, there's times we was brilliant, mm -hmm. but then there was other times more than none that it just didn't yeah. categorically yeah. work. And that is trying to fast track everything when you've got the money to do it, that which happens I think is the wrong way. Mm -hmm. It happens a lot in football though, like when you, Obviously, QPR has spent a lot of money in their perspective, but there's other times where the money's not spent, but they just, you just algamate loads of players. Like, remember when Luscott was saying that, yeah, when he's like, really, they just got random guys yeah, and they yeah. just tried to make it work. And they, <laughs> when they came up. Fuller, when they came up, yeah, random it's random. No, it's honest, it's yeah. like, as a player though, when you're in that change room, yeah. do you just look around and go like, who the, who the fuck are these yeah, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you know what? It's, it's more of a thing of, did we need that? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I think if you're gonna make signings like that, then it has to be better than what you already have. Yeah. Otherwise, what's the, what's the point? Mm. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. And that just never happened at QPR. And I really felt sorry for the, the QPR fans, to be honest with you, because there was just a lot of big names, which they were happy about them coming mm. to their team. But then with those big names, just brought anger to them because things ain't going mm -hmm. the way they expected. Yeah. So then it started to get a little bit hostile down there, <laughs> especially for me until I scored that goal against Chelsea. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it just- I said, oh, he's cool. Yeah. <laughs> it just and went so football was weird. Excitable guy. Like, a lovely yeah, person. Everyone likes a lovely person. I feel like he, I feel like 
because I was in and around the club at that point. So I knew what was going on a lot of the times with, with Tony Fernandez, right? And I just know he's a really nice guy. I've met him loads too of times. Nice. He's such a nice guy, but I feel like he was trying to appease the, the QPR fans yeah. too much. You yeah. know, every, but like with the community stuff, he's so good. Yeah. But so when I saw like, you know, the FFP situation, it started going left. Mad. It was kind of sad to see because he wants the best for QPR, yeah, but agreed. just did it the wrong way. You know yeah, what I mean? Agreed, yeah. Agreed, agreed. No, but listen, man, let's get to it. No, 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 before we get into that game, there's one player I actually just want to ask quickly about. Adele, Adele Terrell, Terrell. Oh boy. You knew it was coming. I still speak <laughs> to it to this day. Yeah. forget, <laughs> legend and yeah, icon. Yeah, yeah. Everybody remembers that championship season like it was yesterday. Yeah, but even in the Premier League, bro, he's supposed to Premier League, league that season, yeah. yeah. That Fulham goal. What was yeah. he like in training? We've never had someone who's been with him, but what's he like? was he like that in training? Was categorically, I need a story. <laughs> he's categorically, uh, probably, I reckon, manipulating the ball and on the ball, probably one of the best I've played with yeah. out of all the players I've played with. And that's You've down to like Rabinio's level. Wow. Like his ball control was nuts mm. to the point where if he called Megs, you're getting Meg. <laughs> 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 like, no, <laughs> no, seriously. And I'm like, why don't you, why do you have to do that all the time? He said, because I know that I can make them. <laughs> so I said to him, I'm gonna hear you out here. Mm. Just explain it to me. Mm -hmm. mm. He said to me, Sean, as soon as I move the ball that way, just a little bit, it's natural that your left leg goes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what he's waiting for. As soon as you go like that, just rolls it through. Mm. And then he'll just laugh and then he'll just go. <laughs> but honestly, he was frightening. He was as so as one of the, at that point, when you got to keep up, being one of the more seasoned vets, if you like, in the dressing room, was there a hint of frustration seeing that level of ability, but then not being able to consistently kind of put it together? With yeah, I used to cuss him all the time. It wasn't, he couldn't consistently put it together. He, and he will tell you this himself. He was just, the, his life, the way he was living. Yeah. Like when he was at QPR and you lot, everyone's raving about how well he's doing that in the championship. Mm -hmm. he's a, if you knew how he lived away from the game, you would be like, how? Well, that don't make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Like he wasn't eating right. His pre-match meal would be like a pizza and like just mad things. Yeah, like, do you get what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like, well, and that's so just how he grew up playing football. Mm. So although it's wrong here, it's culture. Except. That's yeah. how he got to where he was. He's yeah. always done that. And I don't know. I think it might have been Warnock. Nobody kind of got hold of him mm -hmm. and pulled him back oh. because he was doing that well. He's the nobody wants to change yeah. anything. It's Eden so Hazard it's situation. Like you, you a, Eden Hazard's exactly like that. Cantona, he just eats what he wants. And Canio, you, yeah, you get those kind of mavericks. Certain things so you can't good. change. The managers is a little bit like, ah, I'll let him get away with kind of yeah. whatever he's doing type of thing because it's what he's given me. But then I imagine as teammates, as guys, especially Rio's in that dressing room, guys who've won things must be like, let me just ring him around his neck and just let him know. Do you know who else was you could really be one good? of the world's yeah. best when he came? Ravel Morrison. Mm. That was Speak another one it. as well. Speak Speak Ravel, it. like man, because yeah. listen, that's he just, like one of our great what ifs. That man, he just he right just there. lives life yeah. like he wasn't a footballer. Mm. If that makes sense. If yeah. it was too cold, he would just wouldn't come to training. Like, just, <laughs> just do you know what I mean? His yeah. thought process was different. But you give this guy the ball, boy. <laughs> yeah. It's like, there is no defender. He don't even do a step over. He just walks past you. Who was better? Tarapt or, or Ravel? I would say Adele. Hmm. I'd say Adele was better. Hmm. Hey, that's a, that's a, that's a that's, 1v1 that's I like. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's a 1v1 I like. They'll probably both get a turn about it. What are we doing? <laughs> you know, what are we, we doing there, man? You know, we never got to see LeBron v, v MJ. Yeah. <laughs> Adele v Ravel. <laughs> <laughs> Adele v Ravel, I like oh, that. Oh my gosh, that's but too no, funny. Let's, let's get You're not getting away game. from it though. You said you wanted to see, you wanted to wave the bus goodbye. Yes. <laughs> nah, it wasn't, it wasn't the bus. I think it was just more of like, it was that first trophy like that first yeah, Premier yeah, League, yeah. like, yeah. so it wasn't about the players or anything yeah. like that. It was more about to see the fans, the atmosphere yeah, yeah. than anything else. So I was only there like two minutes, me and Aiden, we just watched for a few minutes and then oh, we just course, went Aiden and got on the bus. Well. Yeah, because it was three of us through the academy <laughs> mm -hmm. playing for QPR yeah. that day. And that play, yeah, yeah, so. I forgot, but I forgot <laughs> That yeah. whole prep, like, in my head, I was thinking, mm -hmm. what is the chances <laughs> of three academy players being able to be in this situation where they could stop City from winning the Premier League mm -hmm. for the first time. What was that whole game like? Yeah. That whole moment? Because we spoke to Jordan, of course, and he, his back header. <laughs> <laughs> we roasted him about that, yeah, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was that whole game like? And like when Aguero scored, like whatever, as a player, you must have been like, 
damn, this is insane. Because that's probably the loudest Etihad has ever been. I don't think you could ever top a situation like that, no, surely. It, no, to be fair, against Villa, you know, when the comeback 3-2, yeah, that, that was way, mad yeah, that as well. Crazy. That was yeah, loud yeah. as well. City have moments. <laughs> yeah. Damn them, man. You know what I mean? But what was um, it like being in the... In, in like, it was, in, it was mad that? because we, we obviously had a plan. Mm -hmm. We knew our situation. Our plan was to contain them, frustrate the hell out of them mm -hmm. as much as possible, mm -hmm. hit them on a break because we we could break. We had mm -hmm. some quick players in the team. Everything was going cook and curry, innit? We was in a nice position, mm -hmm. boy. Mm -hmm. And then, boy, all I remember is the knee. Joey mm -hmm. gets sent yeah, off yeah, and I was yeah. like, Jesus. <laughs> against any team, you just don't need it to be against City. The yeah. team that keep the ball like that, we're running enough already. Mm -hmm. And then they get to 2-2 two, two, and I think we go on a break and it goes out for a throw-in. And by rights, we should time waste. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So whoever's gone and took the throw-in, I don't know if I can't remember if it was Jay Boothroy, mm -hmm. but they've got rushed over, took the throw-in, thrown it down. Obviously, they see it win the ball back. Then it goes down the other end. I think Mario, maybe one assist. That's he had at, assist. His, at Man only City. Assist. And it was in that game. And he didn't even like stand up and pass it. He just kind of slid mm -hmm. and Told hooked it. it. Yeah, yeah, do you know what I mean? And it went in. But um, at 2-2, two, two, I already knew You're gonna that we it. stayed up. Oh, okay, yeah. Not that was the reason for the goal. Yeah. We already knew because Mark Hughes got the message on to us. Well, to me anyway. But even just then, that it was like five minutes of fucking craziness. Mm -hmm. And we're three, two down. Mm -hmm. Rest of the players thought like, all right, we're done sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, so. <We're> safe. <laughs> <Probably more. laughs> it was a bit mad, like, but it, that whole atmosphere and that feeling was just, just weird. But mm. like I say to everybody, being a City fan and obviously playing for QPI, it worked out perfectly on the day. QPR yeah. stay up, City win the title. Yeah, but no, what, to what, to what yeah, Cam yeah. said, when the girl go goes in, yeah, obviously you're on professional mode, yeah, but are you in that position where it's like, <laughs> Just a little. I didn't. I was more like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> because I would have, it'd be nice to go there and come away with like mm, yeah. something, you know, because yeah, I yeah. thought on the day we put the work in mm, to deserve yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. And to, especially until Joey gets sent out. <laughs> yeah, I keep mentioning his name. <laughs> <laughs> You're letting him forget that. <laughs> yeah. So until then, we, we was kind of given as good as we got, mm. sort of thing. So to lose 3 2 was quite disheartening. Yeah. It's never nice when you put the work in like, and you lose. Yeah. Just to go back, of course, like we spoke about when you won uh, the Premier League, of course. And that same year though, when you won the Premier League, you didn't get called up for the World Cup. You didn't have to go up to World Cup. So- The pick Theo in the front, right? I was mm. just about to ask you. So what was that like? Because I feel like Theo didn't only disrupt you going to the World Cup. There's so many people that I feel aggrieved about that. I think there was Defoe. Darren Bent. He's he, he should be pissed about that. Was it Jermaine Defoe as well? Jermaine oh, Defoe, yeah. yourself. What was that like? Because of course you're going, you're battling against Joe Cole, Robin and Duff. So it's going to be hard anyway, but you got that high of I'm a Premier League champion, but then that low comes that you're not going to World Cup. And then you hear 16 year old Theo Walcott from the championship, who never he Sven has never, never ever seen him before. Him before yeah. Gets go, goes to the World Cup. What was that like? That's just when I confirmed I didn't understand football. Mm. <laughs> like I didn't know there was. There's no explanation for it. Like it took me two years to break into England. He, uh, as well as he did for his career after. Mm -hmm. At that point, he hadn't done anything. Mm -hmm. So to get a call up, logically, I couldn't make any understanding of this. Yeah. I just I just got to the point and I said, you know what? Fuck it. I just found my boy and I said, bro, what you doing? He said, nothing. I said, all right, we're going on an eight week holiday. <laughs> I just got out of the country. Yeah. But I just got out of the country because I, I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to answer questions because I didn't have an answer to give anybody mm -hmm. because anybody that watches football would never understand that. No. Yeah. Like from any point of view, just because of, and it's not even because it's Theo, just because he's never played, mm. never played in the Premier League, never played yeah. first team really. Yeah. So did that just one didn't hurt get it. Because obviously like you've mentioned that. You, yeah, of course, it, of course it hurts. It always hurts when you, you don't play and you really want to play, or especially when it comes to your country representing them in a big tournament. Of course it hurt, but it's, it's one of those, isn't it? Like you got zero. What, what can well. I? What can? What can I do about it? Even in hindsight, if you look at it, it wasn't a correct decision. He got zero minutes. He got yeah, zero he got minutes. Um, he went for the experience. I, yeah, it was almost like a work experience trip. You feel like when someone who actually could have played, and I feel like it was around the time when 
a lot of youngsters were breaking through if that makes sense Ronaldo Rooney so it was almost like England wanted their own their next own one up child. if that makes sense it's like we've had Owen we've had Rooney <laughs> this is the next one up. and it was like no 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 let's not force it <laughs> that was the thing it was what I felt like at the time <laughs> anyway but yeah, it's just it's just a weird did you ever you're, from there like <laughs> with, with Sven was that the end of Sven I was gonna right? say yeah did you did, what was Sven like because it's funny you know what, in the actually, media it's cool guy like he seemed, <laughs> yeah that's the thing but Sven oh. in the media but like he seems a bit of a wildcat as well yeah Oh, yeah, yeah, like? I got on with him good. Yeah. Before yeah. he became England manager, I was like, he was like this renowned. <laughs> bro, he had Playboy models. Man, man, he had Philanderos. Man was a Philandero, bro. Your personality, but as a, as a player under him, what was he like? Yeah. No, I got, I got on well with him. To be honest, did with he you. call you though and tell you're not coming? Yeah, call me on the phone. Oh, what did you say you must say I don't that. understand. Uh-huh. And no, I just got to the point understand. where I just said, okay, no problem. I just put the phone down and went back my business. Because there's nothing. I've I've. I learned in football, there's certain things that are completely out of your control. Yeah. Mm. That is one of them. Yeah. Mm. Why am I going to beat myself up? I've done as much as I physically possibly can. Played 100% every game. He asked me to play more games. I was playing more games. Mm-hmm. And then he says, I can't call me. So what? I can't do nothing else. So mm-hmm. I'm not going to be down and bring all that home to my family mm-hmm. and stuff. I was like, nah, I'm cool. No, I heard it, man. You said that. What was he like as a, as a person? I, I, I got on with him. Mm-hmm. Even after that, to be fair, I him and his coaching staff mm. we used to play table tennis with him and stuff we we actually vibed mm. like me and Defoe was always hanging around and having a laugh with him mm. there's a lot of talk about you know um you know we've heard it from Rio we've heard it from Gerard we've heard it from Lampard every single person wants to remind us about it but with the golden generation or whatever the, that England situation people they said that there's there was rivalries in the camp people were sitting away from each other people weren't getting on and that's one of the reasons why they didn't deliver what do you think about that? Like when you were in and around there, cause you got called up from 2004 was your debut. Yeah. So what was the England camp like? What was the situation there? Could you feel this or do you think it's about I don't even business about, <laughs> yeah. to be honest with you, I'm not one of the people that I think, whether you get on or not away from the pitch, I think once you're on the pitch, as you've seen, in, until the bad results come, everyone was fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I think the biggest crime for England at that time is that no manager could figure out a tactic where they could play Stevie G, Lampard and Paul Scholes in the same midfield. Mm-hmm. I think if you look at the tactics now, all three of them play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they can still play with wingers. Yeah. So like, I think that is, if, if anything that lost us, I would say in a way, those big tournaments or us not getting to the final, I'd say it's more little things like that because although people might not like each other, once they cross that line, I bet he will tackle this guy for you. Mm-hmm. Play for each other. Yeah, you're going to play for each other because mm-hmm. you don't want to lose. So yeah. I don't, I never really looked at little things like that. Mm. Like and when I was there I was with the young guys, and it? it's like me and Jam are always hanging together, mm. like Jermaine Jenners. We, we just, yeah, we yeah. just stayed with kind of like our age group sort of thing. So we didn't really buy into all that. Mm. Like, we've asked you a lot, man. There's someone that we actually haven't even spoke about in all of this, man. Like your brother, man. Yeah. Like, we haven't spoken about your brother at all. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 Just living life, innit? <laughs> <laughs> but like, what was it like growing up? Cause it's it's rare for like family members to make it, but to have your brother playing the game as well. Like when you guys were coming through, what was that sort of like? It was weird because we never really, didn't really as kids, something. apart from when we was just playing with our friends, we never really played for the same Sunday league team yeah. because they didn't have any at my age group at that young. And mm. then when they had him at his age group, I was kind of doing my thing. So we never really ever played together. So he was away somewhere else. And then when his team gelled with my Sunday league team, which was 10 and B at the time for mm. that age group, I was already gone. Mm. But then when I left Forest, he obviously came with me to Man City. Yeah. So a lot, you might know, but we've played a few times together under the Man City banner, but yeah. Flipping kids in it, we didn't even kind of think about it, mm. and that's kind of what pushed me to just go and sign for Red Bulls. Although it wasn't planned, mm. I actually just went to Red Bulls from my to New Jersey for my brother's yeah. wedding. Mm. So I've gone to the wedding, not brought any football boots or anything, and I was there with one of my mates called Vaz. And Red Bulls were playing in Houston. Okay, and my brother said, "Do you want to come?" And I was like, "Do you know what? I'm here. Let me just go and see what all this." MLS hype MLS. about <laughs> sort of thing. That was what it was so, off as well. Yeah. Yeah. So me and my friend booked a ticket, flew to Houston. Somehow, I don't know how it worked out, but we just managed to be in the same hotel as the team. Mm. <laughs> so that was the first thing. So I was chilling with my brother the night before the game. Then we've gone and watched the game. I was like, damn man, it's hot, isn't it? Like just sitting there watching and you're just sweating. I was like, <laughs> wow. 
can man do this? Mm. And then me and my brother have been planning for a long time. He's like, just come over and train with us. I said, yeah, maybe. If I like don't have a club after QPR, I said, I'll just come in and train just to keep fit for my next club mm -hmm. back here, yeah. effectively. And then after the game, I can't remember, I think they lost. I think they may have lost 2-1. But our flight back, not knowing again, was on the exact same flight as the team because they don't fly a chart. They just fly normal flights. So mm -hmm. yeah. I've just got on the plane. I'm just yeah, walking yeah. past like the manager, everyone. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying hello to everyone. I sat down and then my brother said, when you get off the plane, the manager wants to speak to you. Mm. Contract. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> so I was, so I was all right, like, yeah. cool. <laughs> And he was just asking me, Jesse Marshall it was. He was just yeah, asking me. Yeah, yes, yeah, I know yeah, Jesse. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I was just, he, he was just asking me, what did I think about the game? I told him my thoughts. He was telling me his thoughts. And by the time we got to the end of that walkway, he's like, why don't you just come in and train? Mm. So I was like, do you know what? Fuck it. Mm. Went and bought some football boots from the shop <laughs> and then just, just trained. And in three days, he's like, look, we'd love you to sign. Mm. Like the budget's gone. Mm -hmm but we really want you to be here. We think you'll be good for the club and the kids coming through. I said, all right, cool. Get me a green card. I'm in. Okay. <laughs> right, mate. Yeah, yeah. I said, I made a few yeah, connects. Up, yeah. up. Hey, New York, yeah. 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 why not? Like, yeah, go on. No, go on. So, so going back to, so when you went to go and link him, like in, in New York, what was that like? Because he was the king of that. He was place, the man. Right? He, was like, he yeah. was the king and obviously he wasn't the king in England when he was playing. You were obviously the bigger, the bigger player, bigger profile. So going there and seeing he's running that city, the he's script. everyone, he's the top goal scorer every single season. What was that like? Were you just like super proud of him and like- I couldn't have been more proud. Yeah. Like, but like to me, I just, that it was nice to be playing with him and watching him do his thing yeah. daily. Mm. And then seeing the manager asking him, what should we do here? Should Jeez. we give him a day off? It was, yeah. it was nice to see all that. Cause mm -hmm. I, I know how hard he's worked. I, I've watched his journey all the way through mm -hmm. and all the bad rubber, the greens he got along the way and the positions he didn't get himself into, but yeah. ended up in these positions, mm -hmm. him and Nathan Dyer. And then he goes to Plymouth, then he goes to Charlton. Mm -hmm. He does really, really well. And then politic it gets all political and the mm -hmm. next season he's not playing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for him to go through all that and go and do what he did and take that gamble for me, I take my hat off to him, mm -hmm. mate. Record goal that. scorer as well for New York as well, wasn't yeah. it? Record goal scorer? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Show your talking. Bro, show your talking. Hmm. It sounds exactly how your dad <laughs> talks about playing with Rocky. How it's like when the thing with Palace happened, it's like what I get to play with, I'm gone. I'm yeah. gone. It's, it's so funny how it's like every story of like how everything connects is so similar. Yeah. So it's, mad. It's actually it's, you gotta give him mad you gotta give him mad ratings because a lot of people will see not maybe it not working out in England and then kind of just fall away. Right. You don't really hear from yeah. them anymore. Next thing you know, they're playing for SC Dons or something. Do you know what I mean? But he found a way to still be the most relevant, not, not, not the most relevant, but a very relevant name up there. So I give him massive, yeah. a massive respect on for the, that, honestly. honestly the thing the little it. freestyle with Balassi and that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you he know? can spit, no, he can, be, I know, yeah, yeah. he can so, tell. Yeah. He can spit. Is, is he looking to do that? He's gonna <laughs> ever get into that, yeah? Right, he, no, honestly, <laughs> he, 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 he even <laughs> catches me, he caught me off guard to be fair. Mm. Like, and I just flipping grew up with him. Yeah. But like he can spit, so I, like we got all the stuff and all the sound system. <laughs> so when I first moved over to Jersey, mm. Like he's like, there's yourself. no point. It's like, no point you living out there. We'll just convert the basement. So we went shopping, we put carpet, cleaned out all the basement, mm. painted it all so far. Mm. And I just put all my music stuff down there, all my machine pads and everything. Yeah, and we yeah, just yeah. started making beats and he would just, it ain't even finished yet. It's just me messing around. Yeah. And he would just jump on it and just mm. go. Yeah, and it just off that's, 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 that's two brothers yeah, living yeah, in yeah, 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 America. Like, yo, in America. I know, I, I, I know what then, 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 <laughs> bro, bro, we took it. <laughs> I know where it's like two brothers running wild in America. In Jersey. In Jersey. <laughs> Don't play with me. Man said no. in Jersey. Damn. Listen, Sean, it's been real, my bro. Now I got some more questions. Yeah, just man. before. Go on, go on. I was gonna I got some buzz. We got always on, that's what I was about to introduce that, man. Yeah, you Okay, down, to, get to that, I was gonna say, like you've touched on brother, we've touched on father, son as well. <laughs> Man, like the Marge, bro. <laughs> backflip king. Oh, man, you need to stop that shit. <laughs> what does he do? He does backflip. Does back no, but it's high. The yeah, nanny one. Nanny yeah, style. Oh, he does yeah. the, what's the guy that used to do the backflip in WWE? Like he does that one. He goes high. Like he goes like, he gets proper air time. How, how, how exciting is that? Because it's rare you even see like a father, son, have great careers, father, son, brother, but now third generation, mm. like that must be, you're, you're saying how proud you are about your brother, but 
your son. You now. guys did a great piece on that. Yeah, right? yeah, and go and watch that piece, man. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's not overwhelming. I don't know the right word. Like, I'm mad happy for him because he did it on his own. Mm-hmm. I think um, a lot of people said, did you force him into it? Did you make him try? I was like, nope. Yeah. Don't, didn't even give him a ball. I only bought him a ball if he wanted a ball sort of thing. Yeah, so, yeah, Cause yeah. then I knew this is something he wants and mm, not yeah, something absolutely. I'm putting in his hand. And like, he just grew and he wasn't too serious about it for a while, for a long while until like nine, 10. Then he started doing like training sessions and Sunday leagues. And then he was at Man United for a little bit doing like their schoolboy training and stuff. And then he was at City and they, they, they both wanted him to sign. And I just said, no. He said to me, dad, why can't I sign for both of them? Because so there's one thing coaches can't teach you is raw ability. Mm-hmm. Like the, the ability kids learn on the street cannot be taught by any coach. Yeah, Everything else you can learn. So I said, you can just do what you're doing. Just enjoy football. You yeah. don't need no pressures. You don't need to worry about contracts or anything like that. See, but all my friends said, do not worry about your friends. And then when the time comes, he's city have taken him on like a six month and there's kids there that are getting contracts, got boot deals and stuff like that before like the YTS. And I'm like, just chill, man. Mm-hmm. Just do your thing. I said, you're the only person that plays like you. All everybody there has been at City for what, six, seven years? They only know really how to play one way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's the City way. Yeah, You're that little spanner out the box with that little monkey wrench that can, mm. you can desize it and make it bigger or smaller. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You can adjust, you can yeah, adapt. Yeah. I said, you're different. By the time it comes to signing schoolboys, all those boys that he was talking about got let go. He got his contract. Mm. And then he just kept building and building. Then he gets to the point where he wants to play first team football now. So now this is what, this is the only part where people like me, dad and Brad can get involved because he's like, I want to leave. That was the first thing where I said, okay, he seriously wants to play yeah. football. Mm. Because most kids, Come. when they're at a place like that, We've seen at Chelsea to this day, those players are still there. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to move on Mm -hmm. and blow up or establish themselves. They're just happy where they are. He wanted to go out. And from that day, I said, you know what? Cool. Yeah, about it. Do your thing. You're serious about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we've got another one, my daughter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cold. She's loading. Cold. (laughs) How old is she? Nine. Nine. Ah, All right. Left foot and right foot. (laughs) <laughs> you know they be coming at me next year, so you say, Yo, <laughs> whatever foot you want, we can give it to you. Yeah, listen. <laughs> oh, man. Nah, and and WSL and stuff is growing as well. Yeah. So by the time she's ready, I'm sure there's, but they'll be selling out stadiums every single week. Yeah, man. They're selling out now. Wembley was the biggest domestic game ever. Mm-hmm. So it's only going to get bigger, man. But listen, bro, before you go, as is custom around here, we've got to do some quick fire questions. Mm. Cam, whenever you're ready, get them rolling, bro. Okay, firstly, best player you've played with? Fucking hell, that's not a quick fire. Simple, <laughs> simple. Not a quick yeah, fire you know, question. But he we, knows we, this. Yeah, <laughs> best player you played with, right. and we need to know why, because you've played with some serious players, yeah. bro. Is this just club based or just England anything? You know what, give me club, and then give me when you were at the England camp. All right, so club did he drug, bro? Didier, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, talk to me. I think people got to remember when Didier Drogba was playing up front on his own, no other team was doing it. Speak on it. Number nine, <laughs> on the pod. number on nine, it. one man taking on all four I defenders. Myself. <laughs> <laughs> Not only taking them on, but he's, he's scoring goals, he's creating goals, he's winning free kicks. Mm. Like people forget he didn't start too good either. Mm-hmm. He just, Learned the game. Once he learned the game, it was a wrap, man. No one can touch him mm. after that. For me, I probably in my time was probably the greatest number nine that I personally yeah. played with. Mm. And you were there for, with him at 06, 07 when yeah. he went mad. mad. That's he came back he, from. I was scoring volleys from <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right yards and that. He was moving silly, bro. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. All right. Um, okay, England. England camp. CVG. Stevie. Mm. Okay, okay, listen. Yeah, no, no, you know what's coming. No, no, no. <laughs> you know what's coming now. You know what's the infamous question of, of Stevie, Skulls, Lamps. And, and Lamps. So you're Gerard over. All Lamps. right, so why bro. and why? And all right, so not. first of all, I'll tell you the why. Because mm-hmm. I played in his side in the short sided games in my first day in training for England. And when he passed me that ball, side foot grass car. <laughs> The way it got to me that quickly, mm. I was like, 
shit. There's no <laughs> slack in it. Sort of thing. You know, she said exactly <laughs> the same thing. Peter Crouch said it. I was exactly like, the same thing. Oh my god. I was like, all right, cool. But just to watch what he did for Liverpool single handedly, mm-hmm. and to now when I look at, it, I'm like, imagine Stevie G in this Liverpool team mm-hmm. doing what he did in a less of a Liverpool team, mm-hmm. and what he won for them. So it's always been Stevie G, but. Mm-hmm. I give it to Stevie G over those two based on Stevie G, I want to say is those two put together, mm. but Stevie G has that, he can play that anchor side mm-hmm. where he sits in front of the defense, sweeps up, but he's also got the Lampard side where he can get in a box and score mm. goals as well. Whereas I think Lamps can spray the passes, he will try to defend, but mm. he, he didn't have that. Stevie G has a nasty side to him mm. where he would get those little digs and kicks in and never ever get caught. Yeah. Mm. Scolzi. <laughs> He'll get caught every was, time. Was Mr. Dictator. Mm. I hated playing against him when, when it was City v Man, Man United. Because as soon as you get to him, by the time you get there, the ball was like oh, yeah, over yeah. there. Like he could control any game at mm-hmm. any given time. And even when I played, um, I'm gonna sound stupid, but in Soccer Aid a couple years back, <laughs> some of the touches he was doing, like he's just in this little circle and he's talking, he's saying to me, Sean, I'm, I'm tired here. The ball coming just like, round the corner. <laughs> like, he's just like, mm. Scolzi was seriously mm. good as well. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, Stevie G still always gets it for me. Okay, um, best player you've played against? Ashley Cole. Ashley mm. Cole, yeah? Yeah, light years. Sure. Like Wayne Bridge was good. He, the goal, he, he, he would the be goal. the next one, but for me, I reckon 10, maybe close to 15 years, I would mm. say. For me, Ashley Cole was the best in England, possibly in the world at well, that time. Mm. I, I personally say that I'd never seen that. And I'm a winger going against him. He, mm-hmm. he stands up, we had some battles. He stands up long. Mm-hmm. Like wingers always try to control the situation to where the defender either steps or tries to lunge or puts a foot in, because mm-hmm. that's when you kind of make your move. Mm-hmm. He didn't. Yeah, Like he would just like, just keep jockeying, no matter where you went, just keep jockeying mm. until the point you get, you pass back or you take a gamble. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that gamble pays off, sometimes it doesn't, but Ashley Cole has that. And the best player that you played against, but that's like not a direct opposite number. So just on the pitch, you're on the pitch with this guy. Ronaldinho. Who is that place? Ronaldinho. Mm. Oh, you At were Chelsea. against Fernandinho when he was, <laughs> when you he, know, when, yeah. Yeah. He was, when he was, was cooking. Oh, when them was, Chelsea, remember the early the goal goals? Goal. Yeah. Battle. Nah, I need, I need to talk to the record about Fernandinho. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> mate. Honestly, the goal, I think I was on the bench when he scored that goal. I think it was, but the goal where he scored, where he just yeah. Yeah, outside yeah, yeah. of it the top <laughs> But the game that I played him, he broke. And I caught him, like it wasn't the speed part. Yeah. But I remember, like I knew I had to foul him. There mm-hmm. was like nothing else I could do. Mm-hmm. Just foul him. Went to foul him. It was like a little boy hitting like a wall. Like, he was he was scary. Like good to wear it. It was almost like he was just playing on the beach yeah. every day. <laughs> like he could just do what he wanted when he wanted. Thierry was kind of like that as yeah. well. To be fair, but. Well, Jose Mourinho obviously would have had to prepare you guys for playing against Ronaldinho. What was he saying in the change room before a game against like Ronaldinho? Yeah, but everyone says, just right, look at the other players. Because you can't <laughs> yeah, just focus on him. Because if you cold. focus on Echo. him, Echo. Like, everyone else yeah, is like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. you just have to do what you got to do and you got to yeah. play the Chelsea the way he wanted us to play. Yeah. Oh my That's God, you nah, crazy. Um, biggest like career highlight. Um, England debut against Ukraine at St. James's Park. Mm. We scored. Yeah. yeah. It's the one that your dad went mad about, isn't it? Yeah, he's acting like... <laughs> yeah. Again. <laughs> like like I'm not a grown man by then. I've yeah. come off after the game, he's giving me hugs and kisses. I'm like, dad, move, man. Like, yeah. like. So, of course, lowest yeah, lowest yeah. moment in your, in your career. I'd say it would be the situation not getting called up to the World Cup. Mm. Oh, okay. I would actually yeah. say that was like the biggest low, everything else is manageable. It comes with the territory of football. Mm-hmm. As much as you want to play all the time, you're not going to, like I said, it's a matter of opinions mm-hmm. and preferences, mm-hmm. but that was a low in respects of, I didn't go because a 16 year old was in a squad that's never played the first team game yeah. before. Who was okay. a player that you felt was maybe underrated? Underrated? Yeah. That, I t- that when I played for England for who? For both, Earth, if anything, I would say it's that you felt like when you played with him as a teammate, incredible. Michael Carrick. I knew you were mm. going to say Carrick. on club, and universal. Country, Michael Carrick, man. And 
Gareth Barry. I wouldn't say Gareth Barry so much because he played a lot for England. <laughs> yeah. But Michael Carrick, man, honestly. Yeah. Like, for a winger, when you're on that, you know, when you're on that line, mm -hmm. if you're stuck, you need it out. Mm -hmm. This brother, no matter how many people are around you, he always seemed to find a lane where you can get the ball to him. Yeah. Like he was so, his football IQ is so high. Mm. Such a player, man. And he was just chilled. Yeah. Like Tottenham, just let him go like he was just nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Them players you got to fight for, bro. Mm. Mm. Believe. Listen, man. Uh, and how about, oh, you said for both. You yeah. say if there was like one lesson for like your career that you wish you knew when you started, what would you say it would be? Staying to a degree, stay naive and raw. Mm. I think that's where I would say personally, my game changed. I became to understand the game of football way too much. Mm. Think when I was at City, and in business, who I was playing against or how you wanted me to play, mm. this is what I'm gonna do. You get me the ball, mm. you could be Coley, you could be anybody, I was gonna try and take you on. Yeah. Mm. When I went to Chelsea, the wing play was completely different. It was more mm. about playing with people. Mm. And I lost sight and touch of that. And mm. I learned to play football a different way. Mm. So yeah, I would you, say for a kid, you got to stay like, a, in, in certain ways, stay aggressive. Like, mm -hmm. don't care who you come up against. If you're a winger, just do what you got to do. Yeah. Mm. What did you do with your first paycheck? That big check. You know what, I didn't even want to, what did you do with that first Chelsea bag? Because I know the Chelsea bag was, was you're getting some good money over there, you right? You've got to just forget about taxes over it. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hype. You know what I mean? You know, you know, about it's taxes. Like, it's percent, bro. Hey, yo. <laughs> Everything's what it seems, but you know what? Um, I'd say with my when I went to Chelsea, it would be more. It was all about my mum, mm. yeah, because I'd been away from my mum for what since I was sixteen. Yeah, mm -hmm. So like when I come down, it was all about my mum. My mum came to all my Christmas parties. Anytime I was at clubbing, my mum was with me. Like I just rolled deep with my mum mm -hmm. everywhere. So it was all, most of it Give all went on time. my mum. Nice. Yeah. 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 No, respect that, man. Nice, man. So yeah. um, in terms of like where you're at now, like with the broadcast and everything, what's the, what what are you most enjoying about? life post your playing career? Seeing football from the other side. Mm. I think um, when I watched football before, I didn't, I just watched it because I enjoyed it. Mm. Now I'm watching it and seeing mad little like details. But then at the same time, I revert back to when I was playing. So as much as I want to say, yeah, he's got to do better than that. Mm. I've most probably done the same bloody thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I have to appreciate, so it's learning how to put the point across, but also making everybody understand he's got to do better, mm -hmm. but it is easily done. Do you mm -hmm. get what I mean? It's, no matter how much money you're on or how much money you're not on, mm. certain mistakes that we see in games can happen to anybody. Mm. Yeah, last one for me, because I asked your dad this about Rocky, but when you look at players now, who is one player you look at and you think, this guy's got a bit of me? Nonto. Yeah, he said Nonto. Yeah, yeah Nonto, yeah. I think. Yeah, I've seen The way he plays, like he's, obviously he's short. <laughs> Man, push, you yeah, didn't yeah, want yeah. to say it. <laughs> Had to get out of there first. Yeah. <laughs> no, but just the, he's, he's directness, the way he plays. Like yeah. he keeps the ball, his little jinky runs mm. and stuff like that. I, I, I quite like him a lot, to be uh, fair. Hey, listen, and man, one, and one last question I was going to say, because there's only one player I feel like we haven't asked you about. Yeah. Mario Balotelli. <laughs> have you have you got a, a story that maybe we haven't heard or or, or something? I'd see that, that I don't experience. know what you've heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the fireworks story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, but is it is it what Come was he like as a teammate? Because I can imagine as a young baller coming in, he was crazy. He was he let himself down. I would say as yeah. a footballer, in respects of he could have did whatever he wanted on the pitch. He couldn't control his temper, as everybody knows. Always getting like sent off and getting mm. in some argument, but he, at heart, he was like, he had to learn the hard way. But remember, he moved away from his family. Life, you get yeah. what I'm saying? Like his mum was in, I think it's Ghana. Yeah. Yeah. And he got moved to Italy to live with another family, family because yeah. of the situation. So he, he learned it hard. So there was a lot of life lessons along his mm. journey. Mm. But like whenever we beat Man United, he, he would just like drive through town with his window, that roof off, just singing, City, so just like but that is his character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's out there mm. always, and he's like a he's a good guy. Was he? Yeah. Was he? Was he almost like the the 
the little brother in that dressing room because I imagine a lot of that time as well there would have been a lot of you know just started to win as yeah. well and yeah. you've almost got like the naughty little brother that's just I mean <laughs> that's just <laughs> <literally, laughs> he was yeah. he was he was naughty to be fair like in that respect like a, a little kid yeah. like you talk about the fireworks who lets yeah. fireworks off in the yeah. house <laughs> yeah like that's just not even someone's full it's process mad. first thing is you go to a balcony or a garden right yeah. like yeah. he's just doing it in the bathroom yeah. at the window no, like so that just shows you from those little aspects that yeah. everything that he was doing there is all new. He's just ex ex excited little. Yeah. Bit. We what we always do, you know, we like to create a five aside team for your favorite <laughs> your <laughs> your five aside <laughs> team. <laughs> No goalkeepers, because we don't care about goalkeepers. <laughs> Damn. You're obviously going to say Peter Cech as well, surely. So but so forget goalkeepers. <laughs> Just a five-a-side team for players that you have played with. So let's go. It's one. impossible. <laughs> so Drogba up front. Mm. That's one. Because he can do everything. Mm. Man, I have to put David Silver in there. Mm. <laughs> Got a killer. Well. Am I allowed subs in them thing on? Yeah, we'll give you two subs. We'll give you two subs. Seven, <laughs> little seven, little seven. It's little it's seven, uh, man. It's all right, so in that case. Jogba, David Silva. Nah, and Deco. I need to get Deco in there. Ooh, He's bringing out Deco. That one. I wasn't expecting Dumb baller, innit? Mad baller, yeah, innit? Mad nuts, baller. Man. Deco. And then my centre back has to be ball playing. Mm. Yeah, what? Well. See what Pep's done to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm going to put Rio. Yeah, mm. yeah, he's going to be buzzing Rio. about that one. Bro. South stick with South, but... And then obviously no goalkeeper, so I've got another defender then, yeah. basically, you're saying. Well, you can put you can put another midfielder if you want. Yeah, that's a good point. Then mm. I'm going to chuck in Robinho. <laughs> he's flexing now. He's just, yeah, 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 yeah. He's showing off. He's showing off. That's it. Has two yeah, more Yeah, yeah, and who's your two on the bench then? Um, Lamps. He's like, no, nah, he's not rating Lamps thing still. Oh, I don't know. Like, rating Lamps thing. Oh, no, it's just. It's like, Robin, you like, the archives, Joe Cole. The archives you, figure. Yeah, yeah. You got some. That's, what, that's who I was going to go to, but I think five sides about skills. Mm. Right? Mm. I'll be able to Let, manipulate the ball in them tight mm. spaces. I don't remember. Adele, Adele, Adele's going on my bench. Yeah, okay, I've got Adele. one space, but I'm trying to. Adele on the rail. Yeah. Wait, you know, that's your sixth. You got six. That's yeah. your sixth. You got one more left. You got one more. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, This arc, mate. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna chuck in Hernan Crespo as my extra strike. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 Rex. Some nice sleep. I can't uh, wait to make that graphic. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a dirty that, team, that you know. That is a dirty that's team. Nice. Listen, nah, respect, that's a lovely man. way to end. Sean, thank you so Anytime, much. Man. Man. Family managed to get up. done. <laughs> Remember, like, share, subscribe, notifications on. You already know what to do. We've got more episodes coming out for the rest of the season. Keep mm -hmm. messing with us. We appreciate you guys. That's another episode of Stoppage Time. We're out. <laughs>